can't take you nowhere. It's the whole planet without you. Mama, what the f You don't talk about my daughter. Where's she? Where's she? You get understand that? Get out of here. You understand that? Yeah, man. You understand yeah, that? I got you. you don't f with my kid. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, man. I really do believe you. <laughs> Customer flirting. Imagine you're ready to pawn that chain, right? How about using your charm to score a sweeter deal? Remember Ashley? She had a customer smitten with a better offer. You're the first person I met when I first come here to this pawn shop. Yesterday, I come up here and I got my chain out. Now I gotta pawn it again. Well, how much you have it in pawn for before? Oh, I had it on 120. I was yeah. gonna pawn it for 200. Do you wanna take a look at it? Yeah. Just wait, my friend. What's the plan here? You and Ashley? Do you like BFFs? Now, from where this unconditional love stems, suspicion might be knocking at your door. I can't find her name in the system. You sure can keep a woman waiting. Well, here's the thing. I don't even see you in my system. So you lied to me? I do like you. No, you lied. I adore you. I appreciate that. I would not that. lie to you. Whoa, that confession strategy is next level. But hey, reality is the ultimate plot twist, right? Plans in our heads versus the real-time remix don't always sync up. How much did you get on this? I get the last time 120. Okay. I'll give you 130. Okay. All right, step on over. I think I've got a customer for life. It's good to see you. Nice to see you. 700 cockroaches. No shiny metal, no problem. Time for a quirky twist. Snag those cockroaches and hit the pawn spot down the alley. Who knew creepy crawlies could be the new currency? Hold the phone, folks. His eerie charm's catching on. They are Madagascar hissing cockroaches. Oh, ew, 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 ew. Did you want to see one? No, 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 no! <laughs> Love it! Yeah, those gross goodies? He's got his sneaky secrets for that oddball offering. I was using them to feed my savannah monitors. That is disgusting. How many do you have? If you pick yeah, one of these up, they're actually heavy because there's so many of them in there. I really do believe you. <laughs> Seriously, bro, we're talking a buck a pop. Those things are tough to sell, even as giveaways. It's like offering a lifetime supply of, well, nope. You better take them back home. I wish I had somebody that, that needed them. Thank you very much, I'm sorry. I bought living creatures in the past. Cockroaches isn't in our repertoire, but the best thing about it, the look on Ashley's face, priceless. That was gross. Chicken man. All righty, folks, we've got the rocket man on our radar, but hold on to your feathers, because here comes the chicken man on a mystery hunt while eating chicken in the pawn shop. That's ironic. You hungry? No, I'm not. That, this, I got this for free. I work there, you know what I'm saying? Oh, do you? Yeah. Let me show you. Feel free to lay your chicken on the counter. All right, and look, this is what I do. I say I got chicken and fingers sucking. Come for a plucking. Looks like we've cracked the age-old riddle why the chicken cross the road. Well, to get a pawn shop watch, of course. But hey, buddy, you're not pulling a poultry prank now, are you? He's eating chicken while he's talking to me. Yay, yay! Oh! All right, look, let me see some game right Dude, now. You're, you're spinning chicken on the counter. That's for you, man. Can I see that right there? Sure, you see it? How much this cost? 1,200 bucks. Bucks. Check out Mr. Chicken over here. He's likely on a goof-off mission. However, Seth seems to be pretty annoyed. Oh, here's how he neutralized the chicken threat. Are you seriously gonna buy something or are you just- You ain't even let me see Dude, now you're bothering me. In a second, Byron's about to choke a chicken. Oh, choke the chicken. He's about to. All right, look, look, look. Make a deal, deal. Byron, I stopped the chicken. chicken. Come on, man, let's go. And you know what? You ain't gotta touch me. Angry mom. This mama's boy strolls into the store, peddling his speaker. Seth's deal? Not winning any gold stars. Looks like our dude here is stuck in a pickle. I got a speaker. I got you got multiple speakers. And we $150 short, so I'm hoping you guys can help us out. Realistically, I could sell you them for about 100 bucks. So what you trying to give me for this? I want 150. What you selling you it or pawning it? Selling it. 45 bucks. Mr. Black, you're in for an offer based on your goods. Just a heads up, though, his chat game with Seth could ruffle more scratches than a ticklish itch. So I can get you 45 no, bucks. I don't need for these mother They won't well, give you, me what you I want. You came in, you oh. want 150 no. bucks. Damn. What? Mama, you just... You don't talk like that in front of these people. I done raised you better than that. Now you apologize. I'm just... taking my speaker. What? Oh, yes! Reach it, Mama! Time for a lesson or two. Junior needs a masterclass in manners. 
Let's dial up an apology for his bad language. I can't take you nowhere! It's the whole planet without you! No, no. What the <laughs> What do I pay you guys for? I'm hiring her! I can't take you nowhere! I hope this kid learned his lesson. Ryan, don't Get hit me in the car. car! Get in the car! Okay! Minute paint! Take a breath, people. We've got an artist in the house waving the pro flag and live painting. He's gonna whip up a masterpiece before the big boss, Les. Tell me about your clothes. Well, this is all happenstance from what I, from what I do. I'm an artist. I do these paintings and, um, well, I, I do them live. What does that mean? He paints a four foot by five foot painting in basically four and a half to 10 minutes. Whoa, talk about a high stakes showdown. This show's seen more tricks than a magician's hat. No crystal ball here. Let's buckle up and watch the masterpiece unfold. Go! We are at 2.20. Five minutes. Two minutes left. Oh my god, that skill's on fire! Our paintbrush skills are lost at best. But looky here, Mr. Pro's got his bag of tricks. Here's what Les has to offer. 100 bucks. If, if we can meet up to 500, I'll go a couple hundred bucks. Deal for 200. Deal. You got it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I love it. I love it. Disrespecting Ashley. This man is on the hunt through the shop, spotting a bedcum table. He's got a plan for some store-wide spotlight drama. Look what he has to say. This is a sex table, baby, right? This actually. Get your ass over and shut up. Get off that bed. First no, off. I ain't getting no. Get off that bed. Get kicked in the face. Look, come this way, baby. Who do you think you sexy. are to talk to me like Girl, that? if he let me, I'll be slapping that ass. He's probably forgotten where he's standing. And you know how they show punks the exit. Well, Les ain't having any of it. He's diving in for some sense talk. You know what you're talking to, motherfucker. Back up, back up. Take my ass out of here. Really? You don't think so? Here's the way I'm gonna work. You don't disrespect my daughter in my jail. Get the out of here. Les, we go back. Disrespect my daughter in my jail. Striking a nerve on a calm day. You go, Les. Someone needs a major attitude makeover. Time for a crash course in how not to be a jerk. You don't talk about my daughter. Who's that way. Who's you you understand that? Get out of here. You understand that? Yeah, you understand yeah, that? I got you. Don't yeah, with my I'm kid. Sorry. I'm sorry, man. You don't I'm with sorry. my kid. I'm sorry, Les. I'm sorry, man. Get this off property. What's you know, going on out there? Do not go out there. Dirty couch. Fresh in a new city. The furniture hunts on, and guess where you score budget-friendly items? Yep, the pawn shop. Have a look. We have used furniture, and we give deals. Our used furniture sometimes has things on it. Okay, why is it so, so freaking dirty, man? Because it's used. Yeah, it, That's why it's 397 Really? Well, I only got 200 bucks. What's the dilemma here, man? Buying a used sofa at a pawn store and expecting showroom shine? Your brain might not function properly to have such an expectation, sir. Let me try this out, man. I'll tell you what, my shoes are cleaner than this couch. Then don't buy it. Make me a deal. I got cash in my pocket, man. Wow, Come on, 200 man. bucks. Come on. Did you catch the words he just uttered? Mr. Couch is clueless about the league he's stepping into. Time for him to gear up because less is on the horizon. Okay, it's time to go. Come on, man. Come on. Here we go. Yeah, come on, man. Here, come yeah, on, man. Come on, man. Right. Don't make my. Come on, man. This is how we do it in the D. Uh, yeah. Walk out. Walk out, my man. Deal with the devil. Here's a spooky one. This might not be your regular Tuesday. Because this time, the devil isn't at the crossroads, but at the pawn shop trying to sell his gold for cash. How old are you? 2,500 years old. Great. I finally got to meet somebody that's older than my dad. <laughs> so how can I help you today? I want to get rid of this gold. I don't want gold. I want money. I think he's crazy. But interesting fact, people, this time around, you don't have to give your soul in return, but some cash and the devil's good to go. Here's what happened next. This guy might take the cake for the weirdest guy that has ever walked through the store. How much you want? Tell me what you give me. I could have gotten $650 for this stuff. Can't do it. You just says 50. Les hasn't ever made a deal with the devil. But this time around, he's willing to crack this one, being ready to outwit even the Mark Trickster. You want 610? I'll take 650. I can't give it to you. 
guess we don't have a deal. Hey, 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 hey! What's going on? Hey, man, it's a nice fish rider. Get the f out of here. Come on, a fish rider. He was stupid. Man, that's my man, 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 man. Man. When you start attacking another, yo, 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 you better get this right because I ain't got yo, nothing. Please, yo, please. Yo. Nobody don't got time for this. Yo, get this old ass right you off get my me. Campus deal. Buckle up the antiques, guys. We have a man who's brought in a piece of the Victorian century to sell at the pawn shop. Get ready for a blast from the past. I thought this was one of the coolest compasses I have ever seen. It had brass around it. It was really in immaculate condition. How much would you really take for this thing? 150? It's an early century antique. I don't believe there's a great many out there. No matter how much you like the item, our lessier decides to do a little investigation before pulling out the big bucks and take a look at what he finds out. There are huge collectors out there. I think I can make money on this thing if I can get it at the right price. He wants 150 and here you can buy it on the internet for $33. I was surprised at the price. Oh. Oh my, it seems we've uncovered a big old cheat. Now that we know the truth, let's gather our courage and confront the seller. Get ready for a showdown. I've been doing this a long time. Do I look like a idiot? No. How much you have it listed for on the internet? Yes, don't yes. think we're I, stupid. I Come on. I no, you don't. Because it's very rare that I get fooled. Here's the way it works. Take your compass and get your ass out of my store. Refrigerator. Well, well, well. Guess what we stumbled upon? A person. Yeah, a real life human being lurking inside a refrigerator. Now that's one way to stay cool in a store. What the f are you doing? I was checking out this fish rider. I've heard of this situation happening before. People hiding in trunks, in suitcases, in cabinets. They wait until the store closes and then they rob the place. Our fella takes refrigerator admiration to the next level by boldly sitting inside. Talk about being a big Ice Age fan, huh? Just cut to the chase, man. You gonna buy it? I was thinking about buying it. Don't you know me check it out by looking at it, not testing it out? Sometimes. What are we gonna do, rob us? This mother is not getting away with it. Not here. Get ready, everyone. An exciting scene unfolded when the store owners confronted a potential thief. What an electrifying clash we're about to witness. Come on, man. You kind of remind me of like a crackhead Snoop Doggy dog. I'll tell you right now, you take another step, it's gonna be your last step walk. Were you gonna stay in there all night, come out in the yeah. night? What if this guy is part of a bigger team? I'm worried. I need to figure out a solution and talk to my dad. Fake diamonds. This thrilling episode of Hardcore Pawn features a woman claiming her niece gifted her some earrings from their store. Oh, let the drama begin. So there's two problems here. The first problem, you don't have the receipt. Second of all, no cash on the receipt it says no cash refund. One more problem that's really key to this whole thing. Mm -hmm. These are fake. Everything got off to quite a normal start until the lady customer was asked about the receipt. Yeah, apparently she was looking for a pass on that. Talk about being delusional. Two options, you, you pick whichever option you want. You can leave. No, I'm Second, going option. Up up where? Second option what? is you can get the receipt and then- Ain't no can mother you receipt. receipt. It ain't can no receipt. Can you finish listening? No, no. no. It's time to leave. I'm not going nowhere. It was like a verbal storm. As far as a reaction goes, well, let's just say it was quite the showstopper. Let's see how Ashley handled the situation. This is Joe. Joe. Uh, how you He's going to show you to the front door. Wait a mother minute now. Get your hands off. I guess you're leaving. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be back. I'll be back. See you then. Little ass baby. You need to go get fair right quick. Con artist. Buckle up for this one. An overconfident individual walks in claiming to have big cash to buy something. His grand entrance sets the tone for this bizarre encounter. Let me see this one right here, this one right Sorry? here. That's platinum. Yeah, I like that one. Oh, now this is real nice right here. I think I could look good when I go out with this That one's sharp. How much is this one right here? $5.99. Oh, no, oh, no, baby. Hold on, folks, because this is one roller coaster of a ride. Our protagonist believes he's holding a fortune enough to buy a $500 watch. It's a $2 bill. Okay. And it's worth two thousand dollars. It's rare to find a two dollar bill that got red in it. Now tell me they ain't worth two thousand dollars. I'm about to go deaf right now. Oh, don't, don't piss off who got it. 
This fellow insists that a humble $2 bill is worth a whopping 2,000. Give me a break. This dude better be on drugs for this to make sense. So you wanna ball my $2 bill up? Uh, you know what? Yes. I'm gonna tell you something. Okay. You owe bologna sandwich. Y'all ain't got no money. You know okay. what I'm have a good day. Please have Big a mouth. Big mouth is hungry. <laughs> You're hilarious. Real funny, man. Y'all be killing me. I pawn you. Gift card. In a sadistic twist, a customer enters waving a $100 bill, claiming it's for bail. Oh boy, let's see what she has on her buying list. Let me see this right here. This will be good. Okay. This one. This is really pretty. Okay. Mm. It's really pretty. It's really Looks pretty. Looks good on you. It was 100. 100. I'll take it. Okay? So this woman falls in love with an item, but you would not believe how she decides to pay off. <laughs> what a classic move of pawn shop antics. It's a $100 gift card. These are not a gift cards. What would you call it? These that are preferred customer. Right. So these are VIP cards. A gold card allows you discounts on the sales floor. You can't swipe this card and apply $100 on it. Seems like this woman had her fast one playbook already at the pawn shop. But hey, who can predict the wild escalations life throws our way, right? Somebody want to buy a preferred gift card? There's not a hundred dollars on it. There's not. Oh, I'm gonna get my money. Hey, Byron, show her where oh, the money's at. Get my money. He's gonna show you where the money's at. Okay, we'll walk up. I need my money. Somebody want a hundred dollars? Invisible phone. In a daring attempt to find the perfect gift for her son, a woman decides to venture into the pawn shop. But little did she know what awaited her there. I was kind of looking at some of these watches. Okay. Where the hell is my f phone? Something wrong? Yeah, my phone. I just let my f Did you take my phone? Take your phone. There was never a phone on the showcase. Well, folks, it appears our big mama's stealth skills might need a tune-up. However, did you see her put a phone there? <laughs> Not me. I ain't crazy. Damn it! I just yo, laid my phone yo, down. Don't touch me, yo. yo you better yo, get off because I. Ain't my you hold on. Hold on. Don't touch me. Calm down. There was no phone. There there was was no phone there. There was no phone there. Was I laid my phone there. Can someone just ask this woman to keep it down a bit? It looked like she was indeed trying to pull a scam. However, this is how she decides to take cover. When you start attacking another customer in the store, you have got to get out. Yo, my yo, y'all better get this lady because I ain't got yo, nothing. Please, yo, please, listen. Nobody don't got time for this, yo. Get this old ass lady you off give my Looking for a boyfriend. A girl visits the pawn shop on the hunt for her beloved boyfriend. Can you guess where she might find him? Oh, you got it. It's none other than the store itself. Talk about a stroke of genius. I'm sorry, but who are you? you? Just get him for me. Mm -hmm. And so what's this regarding? Um, he's my boyfriend and he's out paying child support. You're That's his girlfriend? I yes, I need him. So don't you have a cell phone number? Could you just get Chad, please? I do have a Chad that works here, but I don't have time for this today. Our girl meets Seth, who's in a funny mood today. Get her ready for a humorous encounter that'll surely make you laugh. It's time for some entertainment. Come on, grab Chad for me. His lovely girlfriend's here. Like, I got all day to just be wasting Keep, my time. This young lady would like to see you. That's not him. Y'all playing games with me now? That's Chad. No, that's not. Then I don't know. I know who I sleep with. What? This lady is out of her mind. Well, apparently, lady, they've got the wrong Chad. So you better take your business elsewhere. Or you've just started looking like a scammer. It's going nowhere fast. Oh, you're talking about Chad. The tall guy with the waves. Yeah, Chad. He just went outside. He's right out there. Y'all wanna sit here and play with me? If this was Chad's girlfriend, I have one piece of advice, Chad. Run away. Where the he at? Watch that. Tressa, the ex-employee, decides to stroll back into the pawn shop with a Rolex watch in tow. Guess what? It's the one her boyfriend paid for. The guy that bought it for you disputed the credit card. No, he didn't. I, here, I can put him on the phone for you. Hold on, Tressa. He did dispute it. He's never been paid for the watch. I can give you a loan today for a thousand, but... Things heat up quickly between the ladies as Tressa and the shop owner engage in a fiery exchange. How about we skip everything to the dispute paperwork? They mailed him a piece of paper to close the dispute. Do you have the form on you? No, but I can call him. Okay, so when you get the form, I can give you a loan for the thousand on the watch. So I can give you the loan that, for the that, thousand. That's stealing. Disputed. It's not fully paid for right now. Until we receive the paperwork. You're wrong right now. Now, let's all hope she can gather her dignity and retrieve that slip to claim her hard-earned cash from the pawn shop. 
it was time for a little redemption. Let's do the $1,000 loan, and then I'll be back with the paperwork. Honest to God, you are so wrong. I'm not a nice person. That's nice to say to your, how old are you? Look how you're treating me I'm in front of my kids. Sure. Have a good day, my <laughs> man. Yes, sir. The ugliest two sisters I've ever seen in my just, life. Just another day at the pawn shop where we've got a mix of decent customers and, well, some pretty pathetic ones. Take this guy, for example. He may seem all laid back, but is he really? <laughs> what you got here? A watch my grandmother gave me. Uh-huh. Wow, this dude received a watch from his grandma, which is pretty sweet, right? But here's the thing. He's convinced it's solid gold and expects a fat stack of cash for it. Well, let's hook him up with the amount he's hoping for. Let's find out. 500. The problem is the metal on it is just stainless steel. Well, the metal on it is just stainless steel, so that's disappointing. But how will this guy take it? Yeah, you see these, this discoloration on the side? No. You don't see the rose? Whoa, hold up. This dude just flat out rejected it without even taking a peek. Talk about a major red flag, am I right? Less than explained. It's in between the links were gold plated. The gold plating had rubbed off. The watch had no value. And then this guy's like, can I get someone else to check it out then? Because Les shut down his hopes of getting any cash. Whoa, okay, Mr. Expert. This dude is seriously not happy about it. Value. It does have value. How about your chain? You want to palm me your chain? Anyway, being the sweetheart that he is, Les brings in another dude for a second opinion, just to be fair. But what happens next is totally mind-blowing and straight-up disrespectful. Brace yourself for this one. It's going to shock you. Does this bozo know what he's doing? Well, I wouldn't really call him names. Seriously, this dude needs to chill and get a grip. I mean, who does he even think he is? Anyway, from that point on, things started spiraling down, and honestly, it's for all the right reasons. 500. Nothing. Stop being a bitch. Now, let's say about to tolerate any disrespect, and nobody should. And this jerk is about to experience a dose of his own medicine. And let me tell you, it's not a pretty sight. Check out what Les has in store for him. Give me my mother man. Come over here and pick this bitch. Oh, man, this dude is about to get serious flipping off. I kid you not. You know what goes down with idiots like him? They're in for a rude awakening. Yo, f you. Get him here. Let's go, my man. Have a good day, sir. Have a good Gotta admit, that was seriously hilarious. What did Les have to lose? Nothing at all. But this guy, oh, yeah, he got exactly what he deserved. The man just couldn't stop with the curses. <laughs> yes, sir, let yourself out. Come on, let yourself out. Oh, you think this was intense? Well, hold on tight because you haven't seen anything yet. So this dude walks in, right? And he brings in some equipment, no beating around the bush, and straight up expects a cool hundred bucks for it. And he believe that. Like, I'm trying to get at least a honey for it. A hundred dollars? Yeah. I won't even be able to sell it. Well, the guy just flat out tells him that there's no way he can cough up a hundred bucks. So the customer's disappointed. But hey, at least he's keeping his cool, right? So how much can you give me, huh? 20 bucks? Well, we're clueless about what this dude's going to pull off next. But hold up. Seth comes swooping in to handle the situation like a boss. Let's see how he tackles it. Putting on the back. Do you know what it is? It don't matter how many you sitting on sure, in the back. because then I can't... Well, things are seriously heating up, and it's turning into a real mess. Seth tries to talk some sense into the guy, but he's just not cooperating. And instead, he's shouting like there's no tomorrow. Dollars for this. You paid 200 for that, I ever heard? Yeah, I mean... Really, you paid 200 So Seth breaks it down for him, saying it's not even worth 100 bucks. But this dude is now causing a scene, making a big fuss that's grabbing everyone's attention, to be honest. I'm, about, I'm trying to get money for it. I've been waiting in this line for an hour. I need more than two. This guy seriously needs to calm down. He's dropping way too many curse words. And honestly, it's going to be his one-way ticket out of the shop. That's when Les steps in to take charge. Let's see how that plays out. You're going to do old man. Who are you calling old mother? Old man. No way. He actually said that? Like, seriously, what the heck? This guy just keeps digging his own grave making the situation even worse for himself. Brace yourself, because what he does next is going to leave you absolutely stunned. Oh, no. Really, mother I got this. I you got want, it. You want to give me more than Oh, my God. Seriously? Can you believe it? This dude actually tried to mess with Les and thought he could get away with it without being kicked out. That's some messed up behavior right there. Like, what on earth was he even thinking? Been wait for an hour. Really? F me? F you. Well, he totally got what he deserved. But guess what? 
that's not even the end of it. Brace yourself for this next one. So, this lady strolls into the store wanting to treat herself to a fancy watch. She's all sweet and ready to drop some cash. What could possibly go haywire, right? This will be good. Okay. This one. This is really pretty. Now, this lady is seriously contemplating whether she should go for it or not. So, what's your take on it, guys? You think she'll end up taking it or not? That's really pretty. It's really Looks pretty. Looks good on you. It was 100. 100. Okay. She went for it. Well, everything's going pretty darn smooth so far. I don't want to jinx it, though, so let's just wait and see what unfolds next. Here. No. What is this? It's a $100 gift card. $100 gift card? Hold up. Is that for real? She whips out a gift card with all this confidence, and hey, is that some kind of new payment method now? Ashley looks totally baffled by this turn of events. Not a gift cards. What would you call it? Is These that are preferred customers. Right. Man, this lady is already super worked up the moment Ashley spills the beans that it's not a gift card. And she goes on to explain the situation. Talk about major agitation right off the bat. He loves you discounts on the sales floor. You can't swipe this card and apply. This lady is seriously cut off guard and maybe just can't handle the fact that it's not a gift card. And well, she's getting a bit too aggressive, folks. You know, the kind that usually gets shown the door and tossed out of the shop. Turn around and swipe it, okay? There's no swiper on this. So you telling me I'm losing? I gotta say, this lady is giving me some major secondhand embarrassment. I mean, it's crystal clear that the card cannot be swiped. Like, come on, that's basic common sense. But no, this woman just kept on making a complete fool out of herself. I don't understand up in here, okay? Because you are not gonna about swipe. to lose, Hold on, all right? Let me explain this I'm not about Man, the way this woman is yelling, it won't be long before she gets the boot from the pawn shop. This customer is completely unreasonable, dude. But hey, props to Ashley for still trying to explain things calmly and patiently. Hey, Wait, where do you see a swipe thing on this? Do you see a swipe? Someone needs to rein in this woman because the way she's throwing a fit over a gift card is seriously ridiculous. I mean, does she not even realize how foolish she looks? Just look at her, still going on and making an absolute spectacle of herself. Somebody want to buy a preferred gift card? There's no not a on it. There's not Man, people can really lose it sometimes. It's wild. And last but not least, we get this other dude who goes absolutely bonkers. But here's the kicker. It's not about something he wants to buy or pawn. Now, you might be wondering, what on earth set him off then? Well, keep watching to find out. Hey, how you doing? I'm here to buy an engagement ring. So No kidding, this guy is actually here to buy an engagement ring. Whoa, that's some exciting news, isn't it? Les coolly presents a selection of engagement rings, and you'd think everything would go smoothly, right? Well, except for the blaring car horns outside, because of course, nothing can be too easy. Oh, damn, so that's the reason for all the honking? There's a massive truck just sitting smack in the middle of the parking lot. Now, take a wild guess, whose truck do you think that might be? Come on, give it a shot, it's not rocket science. Semi truck. And then it's white gold. That's me. Sir, can you ding, ding, ding. It's none other than this guy. So Les politely requests him to move his truck from there. And what do you think his response was? Find a place to park. Oh, man, come on now. I got, I'm in a hurry. I can't be moving yep. my truck in this. Yikes. Did he seriously say that? I mean, how do some people not have basic common sense? Did he genuinely think he was doing the right thing? Les is clearly not putting up with it. And you could totally see that. You don't have an option. You have to move your truck. I'll be more than happy to show you. Can you believe this guy had the nerve to straight up say no? Well, let me tell you, things are about to take a turn for the worse for him. But just when he thought he couldn't dig himself any deeper, he goes ahead and proves you wrong. Why are you so rude? I'm not moving the damn truck. Byron, take over. Well, obviously he's about to get kicked out, and trust me, you gotta watch this. It's absolutely hilarious. Move the truck. Come on, man. That, that's wrong, bro. Next time I'm parking on the freeway. This dude should be totally embarrassed about his behavior. And oh boy, he didn't stop there. He just kept on going. And the last straw was this. Move your truck! I don't care what you say. I don't care what you tell me, but I know you're full of You know, well, it's all right, Antoine. I got it, I got it. So how much is this thing worth? Um, its value would be about 75 to $100. You know, I paid 800 bucks for this. Sorry you, you, you got burned. Yeah, so, okay, maybe the thing is a, is a fake. I'm... Ivory Tusk. 
All right, peeps, just welcome our queen of antiques who casually strolls into a pawn shop. Ah, well, she's here to pawn her ivory tusk. Now, oh, isn't that a marvelous collectible? What a classic move, lady. I'm here today at the pawn shop with my ivory tusk that is beautifully hand carved. I would hope that I could get somewhere between 1,000 and 1,500 for it. And what do you want to do with it? I want to pawn it for seven to 10 days. Okay. Need some money between now and four o'clock. <laughs> mm, folks, the world was on the edge of its seats for some ivory enthusiasts. But guess what? Our lady's luck got lightning struck in front of an ivory expert. Unfortunately, it's not ivory. What do you mean it's not ivory? This is bone. It's pieced together bone, and it's made for the tourist trade. It only took like two seconds to tell this was an ivory. I've seen this hundreds of times before. They were in Asia. They went to a market. They were told they were ivory. Whoa, that's a shocking twist. Turns out that the precious treasure was just a bone-made knockoff. However, as far as our lady's reaction goes, let's just say reality hits like a ton of bricks. Thousand to fifteen. I would loan you like a hundred dollars on this. Yeah. Okay, that's what I can do. Do a little bit better. There's no way I could do better. It's not real. It's bone. Okay. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, but I don't loan on pretty. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you. Flintlock pistol. Got your eye on some quick cash? How about you give up on your Wild West hero dream? Therefore, our Mr. Big Shot was weaving his impressive flintlock pistol, hoping for a gold rush fortune. There was a seller there who had uh, got it from a estate sale, and I was told that uh, at the estate sale it had been in the family for generations. So, you know, the seller had a lot of information about it. And if you look over here, they've got some of the markings that are indicative of something in that time period. So, here we go the infamous dialogue I've got a gun collection. However, Mr. Collector, your tail, that prized possession, and your overall aura just don't vibe with Corey standards. The oldest one I've ever bought. It's got a lot of history to it. I think it's a really good gun. So why are you trying to get rid of it? Well, my wife is uh, is kind of pushing me for it. I love this gun. It's like been the cream of my uh, my collection, and you know it kills me to sell it. I I don't want to sell it. So after Corey dialed in the experts, cue the drum roll, people. Turns out our know-it-all collector got served a plate full of surprising facts. <laughs> Who saw that coming, right? It looks the period, and it looks like it has age, but it's all artificial. So, so OK, so how much is this thing worth? Its value would be about $75 to $100. You know, I paid 800 bucks for this. I'm sorry you, you, you got burned. 1995 Atlanta. Buckle up, baseball buffs, and grab your baseball bats to swing for this news. A dude whips out a 1995 Atlanta Braves World Series ring, all set to cash in at the pawn shop. The first championship rings were given to the Giants in 1922 when they beat the Yankees. So it's no big surprise that these things can go for a lot of money. You know, there's a pretty big difference when it comes from staff to player rings. This belonged to Ted, and he issued it or gave it away. It can make it worth more. Look at that. A real gem for sports collectors, huh? Must take a genius to part with this historical treasure. But don't worry. We've got professionals to hold the pawnbroker's hands through it. Let's take a look at the ring here. We have a large diamond set on top of a blue stone, and we're going to have 18 smaller diamonds surrounding it. The company Jostens, they made the rings for the 95 Championship Braves. So on the inside, we should see the Jostens logo. Unfortunately, this isn't even a staff ring. Now it makes me feel like it. He's an aspiring con artist trying to outwit the pawnbrokers. And guess what? That ring's a salesman's knockoff. Shady vibes, right? With the original box and everything, you're looking at around two grand. I was really disappointed. They bring some off the street. I don't know where he came from. All of a sudden, he, he comes through the door, and he's Mr. Expert on baseball. So I don't know. I was really disappointed. Fake Gibson. Guess what, people? We've got ourselves another chapter in the ongoing epic of musical instruments. Get ready, because Chum Lee's taking center stage, facing a dude peddling a Gibson mandolin his way. The thing that makes this mandolin special is that Gibson made it. Gibson mandolins are sweet. We had a lady bring one in from the early 1900s, and Rick practically drooled all over it. It's in great condition. You can see the craftsmanship on it is phenomenal. Look who's stepping up to the plate in the absence of the almighty Rick, the all-knowing savior of the day. 
No need to fret, everyone. He's got it all figured out. I actually have a spending limit of a thousand bucks. I'm not supposed to go any higher than that. It's not the end of the world for me if I don't sell it. I don't mind walking out of here with it. How about 1300 What do you say, 1895 I mean, you see the shape it's in. It's a little dust, but it's fine. Chum Lee's big move involves a casual stroll to the guitar shop because, you know, He's just dying to show off his purchase and hopefully earn a gold star from the boss. Gibsons are covered in a lacquer finish, and this pick guard is totally wrong. This is something Gibson never even used. I just paid $1,500 for that. Ouch. Is it worth anything? Maybe about 100 bucks. Dude, sorry about that. Thanks for the bad news, uh, Jesse. Call me anytime you got any questions, dude. Pick cult sculpture. Hey there, art lovers. If collecting sculptures isn't your thing, don't worry. This guy's covered it. He was parading his prized Picolt sculpture through the pawn shop doors that day. What can you tell me about this thing? It was made in 1888 by the French sculptor Emile Picard. Okay. Rick, it's a quality piece. I don't know the sculptor. Uh, Picard was an artist in France. He was born in the 1830s, died around 1915. He did a lot of mythological stuff. Whoa, hold your horses, viewers. If we're talking about the real deal, we're talking big bucks. But hey, let's not be naive about the art world's tricks. How about we call in sick to work his magic? The patina looks right. What doesn't look right is there's some pity right here. And that crack right there is from when they casted it. It didn't happen later. If it's an original, the casting will all be right. To be honest, I don't know how to respond. I believe this was recast probably like 40, 50 years ago, long after Pakal died. Oh boy, it looks like someone's been served a platter of bitter truth. And surprise, surprise, he was not exactly liking the taste. Newsflash, that art artifact wasn't exactly a masterpiece. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you tell me, but I know you're full of You know, well, it's all right, Antoine. I got it, I got it. That's just what I see. We might be wrong, we don't know. I'm glad he didn't want to buy. This is his loss. Hudson Bay Gorget. Guess who just came in, guys? It's a resident mystery kid, all ready to peddle some vintage soldier gear from the history books. Presenting the star, here's a Hudson Bay gorget. What do you know about this thing? Uh, as far as I know, it was uh, made by Hudson Bay somewhere probably around 1700s. I don't know a whole lot about it. My dad actually got it. He picked it up at an auction. Do you know what he paid for it? A uh, second mortgage on his house. Okay. Let's all give a round of applause to his dad here for emptying his pockets on this priceless gem. And that's totally credible, right? Or maybe not. Any thoughts? For about 100,000. You know, I don't see that happening. Why not? Because I think it's worth a lot less. How much less? Like 99,000 less. I can tell you right now it's not 1700s. Learn, okay? Our dear dude's about to blow a gasket when Rick lays down some truth bombs. Dog, oh, man, you better behave, son. Isn't that a punk move, right? I'd offer you a thousand bucks. I don't know what you're smoking, man, but that's not gonna work. So I'm gonna take my stuff and leave. All right, have a nice day. That guy, I think he just thinks I'm some punk kid and wanted to lowball me. I'm disappointed I couldn't make a deal. I would have liked to make the money. Tortoise shell guitar. This guy is single-handedly redefining the entire music scene, moving from basic wooden acoustics to full-blown instrumental madness with his epic tortoise shell guitar. Total game changer, right? Yeah, I've never had anyone ask me if it's legal to sell their guitar. It's a tortoise shell. I came to the pawn shop today to see if I could sell my turtle shell guitar. As far as its value, I had no clue. If I was able to sell it today, that money will go towards my daughter's college. What a heartwarming sentiment for our souls. But just to clarify, are we the official headquarters for all things shady and sketchy? So before we stretch a string, here's an opinion. Tortoise shell was real popular back in the day for making combs, sunglasses, guitar picks, all sorts of stuff. It looks cool and it's incredibly durable, but some tortoises became endangered. So in the early 70s, the trade in tortoise shell was banned. Like they say, anything with strings is music to the ears. My advice for the dude is to keep it as a musical souvenir. He'll probably have a delightful struggle trying to offload that gem. There's people that have done 10 months of in-house arrest and paid like 20 grand in fines for selling this stuff illegally. I'm going to look at my options as to what I can and can't do with it. I've got two girls and I don't want jail visits from Sir, what? put it down. Right. If there's anything you want to see, we'll be more than happy to show you, sir. I'm just looking, thanks. Yeah, I know, but it, don't just don't pick them up. This was not normal. <laughs> no! <laughs> 
Naked run. Broken lamp, and the guy to blame for it standing right next to it. And his reaction? You know, playing innocent. Oops, ain't my fault, bro. Classic move, isn't it? I don't know how the I, I got know. broke. I saw you knock it over, bud. Oh. This guy broke a lamp. That means you have to pay for it. Were this you gonna buy it? No, it's broken. You got any money on you? I'm That's not paying question. for the lamp. I yeah, thought we went through this. Look who's here. Mr. Big Shot thinks he can just disrespect less, huh? Why don't you just pay for the damages? Not only if things were this easy. Man, you get him out of here, get him out of here. Byron, it's time for him to go. I get off? I got him, sir. A guy needed help. Yeah, come on, son, I dare you. My kind of help. Assistance out of the door. Well, gather around, because you won't believe the next move this genius pulled. I mean, seriously, Jaws were hitting the floor after what everyone saw. Really? Holy Nobody knows what to do. Hey, you wanna... <laughs> I know Byron is not going to apprehend this guy. What do you do? You just let him go. Raw chicken. Here's the scoop on this dude. Mr. Practical has brought in an oven with actual chicken in it to show that it doesn't work. He wants his cash back. Huh. Let's see if this demonstration does any good or not. I thought you were gonna say you want your chicken No, cooked. I don't want that too. Where's your receipt? I don't wow. have. Give me my money. Even if we did sell on this unit, which we clearly didn't, I'm not gonna take this thing back. It smells horrible. Wow, talk about a sudden jump. But sorry, he wasn't gonna give in to Seth's ridiculous demands. Like, duh, there was only one friggin' option left, you know? There's here. not gonna be any problems. There's gonna here's, be some problems. There's only here, gonna be man. one problem here, and that's your about to get tossed out. Eat going. your oh, chicken. Take this, man. Go up the street to the other pie Perfect. shop. Perfect. And you better keep your mother hands off me. I know you want some chicken. I do, but I like mine cooked, bro. Ah, our culinary genius, folks. Watch how we decided to settle the score on that chicken caper. It's gonna be a real masterpiece, I'm sure. Put that bitch on the grill. And now you can have that And I'm about to still go barbecue and eat good. Well, he was thinking, refund. What I was thinking, lunch. cock a doodle do, mother Drop and roll. So like this one time, right? Some hotshot customer thinks they own the place, bark in the VIP spot, and when the staff politely asks him to move, they're all like, nah, not today. Hey, hold on, I'm gonna call you right back, man. You can't give me a minute? I mean, I've been here. Oh. Don't move, I got you to deny your service. Okay, deny my service, I just wanna deny my service, man. I've been standing in line. Oh, check out Mr. Rule Breaker over here. The sign screams private parking, but this dude was like, I'd rather argue rather than accept my mistake. Man, I'm patiently telling you, dude. Ain't no parking spots outside, dog. All right, I park where the I can park at, okay? Now back the up and let me do me. Oh, snap. Judging by the vibes, I thought we were in for some real drama. Get your popcorn ready, because this is gonna be one heck of a show. Now this guy literally stopped John the Road on the carpet of our store. What was going on? I catch one on, I'm beating the asses. This guy was literally <laughs> out of control. <laughs> Don't touch it. So this dude strolls into a pawn shop like he's the boss. And what does he do? He starts fondling everything in sight. I mean, seriously? Can we not touch random stuff without being told not to? Ugh, some people, I swear. Sir, don't touch it. Sir, sir, what? put it down. Right. A lot of the pieces in that area are very expensive. When a customer comes in and I tell them not to touch something, I'm not kidding. Come on, seriously? Les is laying it out plain and simple. Hands off! So, bro, do yourself a favor and back away, okay? Jeez. How am I gonna see if it's gonna work? I told you not to pick it up, didn't Isn't that what I just told you, sir? If I'm gonna tell you something, aren't you gonna ask to look at it? Aren't you gonna touch you're, it? You owe me $300 for I'm not a little kid. Tongue. First of all, I'm not a little kid. You no, got you're just a You got a piece of that I pick up. Well, ain't you just the master of your own destiny? Get cozy, buddy, because it's time for the consequences to roll on in. Let's see for yourself what happens next. Don't, don't touch it. Don't it's time to go. 
This guy just has an attitude on him, so he's got to go. Yeah, you're lucky you got somebody here. Oh, man, am I lucky. Yeah. It's my lucky day. This place. Generator deal. Satisfying their customers is always at the top of the list for businesses. But on hardcore pawn, it always seems like too much to ask. Take this guy for instance. He's hunting for a generator like it's a treasure hunt or something. You want to generate electricity, yeah. right? That's what a generator does. All you do, open up the gas can, right. pour in gas, fire it up, plug in what you need. Okay. Um, it says 900, but I don't have 900. What do you have? I only got like five. Whoa, stop the presses. Hold the negotiation hotline. Our resident genius is in the mood for something that Seth just couldn't possibly overlook. Brilliant, right? Could I take it to my house and see if it'll work? What? Like, go to my house. I can fire it up so you can see it work. Could you fire it up at my house? Once you purchase it, you can actually take it to your house. This is ridiculous, up. dude. If you want to buy this, I'd be more than happy to sell it to you. Seriously, bro? You're contemplating just swiping something from the store without dropping the cash? Come on. You must be a real brainiac to think that's a stellar idea. Yeah! That's a good way to give yourself a headache, my man. You need help. Damn it! Psychologist. This place. Psychiatrist. Xanax. A beer. Something. Hot bear love. Feeling it, not feeling it. Making others uncomfortable? This one had all of it. Keyword is too much love in the air. But the only odd part is that the not so alive bear is our damsel in distress. You smelling it? Yeah. Does it smell pretty? Have you smelt it? I mean, it's not alive. That doesn't mean it doesn't have a scent. I see in her eyes across the room. Cute. I had to come talk to her a little. Yeah, right, your dad was a hunter. But now he'll be ashamed of seeing you just walking, sniffing bears. You probably don't want his legacy to take a U-turn. Are you interested in buying yeah, bear? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You like salmon, don't you? Oh, Dude, he got cute. So how much were you saying? I'm sorry. 1500 Well, I don't know if I'm feeling her for 1500 How about 1300 We can make a deal. Whatever you want to do with it, sir, we don't care. But here's the deal. Pony up the cash, take it home, and then feel free to give it a friendly pat or two. You know, I just, I'm not feeling this. I'm sorry. I feel like someone else is supposed to have her. I was... You're really feeling it. I saw this guy meet a bear, have a relationship with a bear, and break up with a bear all in a matter of five minutes. Biker. Check this out, folks. We got a tough biker rolling into the pawn shop, looking all cuddly and wanting to return a coat he bought. What a softie, huh? This coat looks a little beat up. Yeah, you're telling me. I'm not very happy. Do you have your receipt? No. Isn't this receipt enough? No, it's not. I need a receipt. You just seen me here last week. I'm sorry. I don't remember you. Well, would you look at that? Our buddy here must have missed the memo on no ticket, no service. Check out how he handled this oh so brilliantly. I can't give you another coat without a receipt. Take, I'll just take one. Then. What do we got? Uh, Byron? What do we you got? You want to assist this, sir? What do we got here? What's wrong? I'll take this whole damn wreck. Hold on, my man. Hold on, I'll my take man, this my whole wreck. What? This ain't, ain't, this ain't you, you, man. Have have a good day. Give me my. What? I can't have, have my coat day, back? Wow, what a brilliant move, I must say. Biker boy, your reaction's gonna win you some awesome consequences, mate. Get my damn coat, man. The thing's flopping in the here, damn wind. Here, you know wind. what, sir? I'm you going down Watch your coat on that exhaust. It might start a fire, bro. Puppet monkey. You won't believe this one, peeps. So this dude just walks into the pawn shop, ready to sell his puppet. And get this, the puppet's got its own little sales pitch. Like, for real. He's actually a, a professional puppet. OK. I bought him 17 years ago from this company in California. He's lying. He kidnapped me in Mexico. So I uh -huh. figured, you know, <laughs> no, I'll try and see what I can get for him. And he goes around asking people if they want to see his monkey. Oh, our gorilla puppet is just a real charmer, isn't it? Let's all hold our breath and wait for the profound wisdom Bobby Jay's going to drop on this pressing matter. How much you want for it? I mean, really. Realistically, I came in saying I didn't want to leave with any less than like one and a quarter for him. Here's the thing. Look around. I don't have any puppets here. Right. That is true. Oh, he's crying. Yeah. He's upset. Yeah. Yeah. Look, oh look at what you did. Look at what you did. Come on. Did you just take a peek at the groundbreaking moves this monkey's got in store? Oh boy. It's like watching Shakespeare in action, isn't it? Really? It's going to be probably 50 bucks. What? Yeah. You got to be okay. kidding me. That's an insult. Okay. You're insulted, so am I. Oh, I'm not interested. 
you just got smacked by a monkey. You like that? Miss, I'm on the phone, okay? Hey, you respect my privacy? You're yeah. gonna step the back if you're a little too close. Hey, give me a time for Oh, man! Man, why you break that man? I did not drop it on accident, man. I didn't break it. I thought it was you, man. Oh, that's good. Nice and have that. Where's Nikki? The lady has arrived at the pawn shop saying one of the workers valued her earrings. And now she's just demanding the estimated price. What a mind wreck, I gotta say. Who'd you talk to? Nicole? Over the phone. Yes, ma'am. But we don't see them over the phone. She is lying. Can I see your merchandise while I'm at work and while you're sitting in your living room? You need to come in, you need to evaluate your earrings, you need to test them. Where Nikki at? Nikki. Nikki, Nicole. Ashley, ever the detective, was in suspicion mode, attempting to dissect the situation. However, the customer's reaction swiftly threw a wrench into her gears. Listen, it's real diamonds. All I know is I need my 400. I'm looking at the diamonds, and I know right off the bat the weight is just not gonna make it. I can do 185. So what you're saying is you're not gonna give me that $400, right? No, I'm not, and you're not gonna come in here demanding money from me. Yes, the I am, because that's what I called for. Well, it appears our lady has raised some eyebrows about her sanity. The idea of consulting Nikki to identify this loudmouth was now on the table. What is that? Excuse me. This is Nikki, and Nikki, she claims she talked to you at 10 o'clock this morning. I don't even know her. I need my mother money right now. She was very confused, but I know one thing for certain. Nana needed to go, go. Phone call, lady. This one time, an elderly woman disrupted the quiet at the pawn shop with her booming phone conversation. Oh, boy. To Ashley, her voice was nothing more than a symphony of annoyance. You ain't supposed to be talking to me like that either. Who the hell you think you talking to? No, I'm talking to you. Ma'am. You know what? You know what? Ma'am. You know what? Excuse me, I'm on the phone. I know, but you you're know? Uh, No, I'm not. I'm excuse hold me. on, hold on. Miss, I'm on the phone, okay? okay Can hey. you respect my privacy? Yeah. Let me step the back if you're a little too close. What's the matter with you, lady? You're in a public place. This ain't your backyard. You better keep your volume down or take your business elsewhere. Duh. Miss, get somebody to help me, please. What do you need help with? I'm needing some help with my rings right here. Can you here. take out your rings? Wait, you just walking up on me to my kid. You see my rings. I don't even know who you is. You want me to help you? I don't walk up I on me. I can help you now. Do not walk up on me. Or else what? OK, keep walking to find out. This lady was probably angry with someone else and had decided to make this pawn shop a stage for her little vet session. Well, here's how Ashley took control of the situation. Now, can somebody help me other than you? No. All right, that. Don't follow me no more. I won't come back in this bitch. All the motherfucking times I've been coming in here giving y'all my motherfucking And this is how I'm getting treated. y'all. I told you. I, I don't know who the hell this lady was mad at. you. 70s PC. Two older folks enter the pawn shop with 1970s computers. They hope to sell them to fund a trip out west. Let's see if they were able to enjoy the blast from the past. Got some equipment here. So how much are you looking for? About $900. To be honest, if you bought these new, it's about like 400 bucks. We need more than that. Yeah, we need more than that. Um, what I can offer you is zero. Zero. Things took a sudden turn. And honestly, it felt like we stumbled into some reality TV treat. Buckle up, because this pawn shop just got a lot more interesting. <laughs> You mean zero. Most people don't get that aggravated when they bring in like ancient artifacts. Yeah, they people collect these. Oh, they're antiques now. We'll take 800. Zero. That's the many times do I need to tell no, you? We're not interested in it. Leave the I store. I'm not taking it. Store. Well, fellas, y'all better just use it to scroll some pictures of the out west because I probably think that trip's now canceled. You and you. You too. Oh, man. I thought it was you, I man. I didn't have that. Put it in the dumpster. She slap. Our big boy seeks an appraisal for a ring, and guess who he stumbles upon? None other than Ashley, the queen of quotes in this pawn shop. This ring right here, I wanted to get it appraised, see how much it might be worth. I also wanted to know how much you guys would give me for it, like as a pawn, and then I pay it back. Okay, when I give you an appraisal, that's not how much I'm gonna give you in pawn. Okay. Hold on. The gentleman, minding his business, faces an unexpected twist as his lady swoops in, ready to reclaim her ring most dramatically. What are you doing? He wanted uh, an appraisal on this ring. On my ring? Why'd you take my ring? Well, I wanted to see how much it was worth. Bull, you're a liar. Why'd you take my ring? Ouch! 
Painful lesson learned, folks. Our big boy now knows the golden rule. Never pawn your wife's ring without her permission. Priceless wisdom, I must say. Sorry. Oh! What? All of a sudden, boom, punches him. And I am dumbfounded. You're a idiot. Let's go. Right now. That's my TV. A boyfriend pawned his girlfriend's TV, and now she was on a mission to reclaim it. Looks like he learned the hard way that pawning is in relationship therapy. Uh, my boyfriend pawned my TV and I need it back. I don't got no slip or nothing, but I need my TV. He took my TV, I woke up this morning and it was gone and I need it back. He didn't give you the ticket? No, you can look it up. I can't help you without the ticket and if it's not in your- Y'all don't do something and it's my cause I need my damn TV from out of here. Being mad and all that's one thing, pawn shop peeps. But our lady here forgot that this store had a no ticket, no service policy. So how about you keep your volume down, lady? So he stole it from you? Yeah. Okay, so what you need to do is go make a police report? No, I need my TV from here right now. Since it's uh -uh. not legal for us to look up no. somebody else's look name. No, look up my TV, lady. No, I will not. Don't, uh -uh, don't do that to me. Or what's gonna happen? Look, bring your ass out here and talk to me. Well, peeps, because we've got a show coming, our lady just summoned the pawn queen, and things are about to get interesting. Can I get my TV? I want my TV! Okay, you have two options. You can leave. I don't have no option. I, I ain't going nowhere. Bye. Get your big ass off me. I do what I want to do. Bye. Get your big ass off me. Big have ass. a good day. Pacifier Pawn. Seth, our pawn shop hero, encounters quite the character of a customer eager to part with both a TV and a ring. But wait, what's in her mouth? I'm Seth. Oh, you cute. Um, yeah. Mm. So how can I help you? I'm just breaking, you know, my TV and my ring. Trying to at least walk out with 800. Let me see your ring. That's right, lady. Our Seth here wasn't going to crack open with that pacifier or your flirting skills. How about we cut to the chase and look at the valuables? Her ring was pretty nice. It has diamonds. It's 10 karat gold. Her TV was relatively nice. Hey, you should answer my question. I said what you want. I know. I said I'm good. So you need a loan or you want to sell it? Loan. Loan? About 300 bucks. Want to taste my ring? No. Lick it? What did she just say? Well, even if the sun arises from the west, I ain't putting that in my mouth. How about we look for someone who might? Would you suck on that pacifier for 20 bucks? You can lick it, I know you want to. Yeah, you can. Ready? <laughs> Push fight. Two buddies square off at a pawn shop brawl over one friend's attempt to pawn the other's beloved PlayStation without permission. This calls for drama. That took my PS shop pawn my Yo, my, money, you know him? Yeah, I know that's my roommate. He tried to pawn my <laughs> your shop, try to get some money off, but I want my yeah, He on me, my is mine. It's my hey, do me a favor, we're not gonna scream, okay? What's happening here? This ain't your hotel room, spoiled punks. You're just creating a ruckus. Y'all better watch that tone and listen to the pawn majesty. Angelo Steve, is that his? This between, yes or no? I mean, we're just trying to handle that, it ourselves. That's fine. Steve, I'm gonna ask you one more time. Is it Angelo's or yours? It used to be his. Okay. He owe me money. What am I supposed Steve? to do? My we pay bills. All my Come on, ain't saying I got to tell you what I'm gonna do. I got to tell you what I'm gonna do. Steve. Steve. All right, guys, you probably want to take your business outside because there are some customers here who are not in a mood to listen to your story. Come take Can it. Can I see it? Come with me. You know, I'm a pawnbroker. I'm not a kindergarten teacher. You guys go talk about it amongst yourselves, and when you figure it out, then come back inside, okay? Until then, I don't want to hear you arguing. You grown men, not kids, go on. All right. Free grab. The girlfriend decided to pawn her boyfriend's Xbox, and now he's on a crusade to rescue it. Lesson learned, right? Pawning is such a brilliant way to solve everything. My girlfriend, she came up here and she got rid of my Xbox 360 and I came up here to get it back. Okay, here's a ticket. Um, no. I can tell you her name and you can just give me my I 360. I can't give you any information about somebody else's account. You okay. just need to give me my stuff. No. But our man here forgot that this store needs a police report for such incidents. So how about you keep your volume down, gamer? <laughs> Instead, this is what he does. Can I just have my we can sell you another one. Well, let me just look for one that I want to okay, grab. Okay, you go that way. Wait, right hey, here. Wait, I'm there, bro. And I'll sell you one. Stop right here. No, I ain't no And I'll selling. sell you one for $200. No, I can grab one for free. Excuse me? Yeah, you, you can heard. You do what? What in the world was this dude thinking? He was running around like it was a jogging park. 
But hold on to your seats. Big Joe was here for a run too. Hey! Get out of here. Get the f out. Now. All right, I'm Don't up. ever step back. My you gonna make me move? Get out of my face. Okay, nice floor. Bye. Hey, 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 hey. What's going on? Hey, man, it's a nice fish rider. Get the f out of here. Come on. The fish rider. He was stupid. When you start attacking another. Yo, 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 you better get this right because I ain't got yo, nothing. Please, yo, please. Yo. Nobody don't got time yo. for this. Yo, get this old ass right you off. Get my Campus deal. Buckle up the antiques, guys. We have a man who's brought in a piece of the Victorian century to sell at the pawn shop. Get ready for a blast from the past. I thought this was one of the coolest compasses I have ever seen. It had brass around it. It was really in immaculate condition. How much would you really take for this thing? 150? It's an early century antique. I don't believe there's a great many out there. No matter how much you like the item, our lessier decides to do a little investigation before pulling out the big bucks and take a look at what he finds out. There are huge collectors out there. I think I can make money on this thing if I can get it at the right price. He wants 150 and here you can buy it on the internet for $33. I was surprised at the price. Oh. Oh my, it seems we've uncovered a big old cheat. Now that we know the truth, let's gather our courage and confront the seller. Get ready for a showdown. I've been doing this a long time. Do I look like a idiot? No. How much you have it listed for on the internet? Yes, don't yes. think we're I stupid. I Come on. No, you don't. Because it's very rare that I get fooled. Here's the way it works. Take your compass and get your ass out of my store. Refrigerator. Well, well, well. Guess what we stumbled upon? A person. Yeah, a real life human being lurking inside a refrigerator. Now that's one way to stay cool in a store. What the f are you doing? I was checking out this fish rider. I've heard of this situation happening before. People hiding in trunks, in suitcases, in cabinets. Okay. They wait until the store closes and then they rob the place. Our fella takes refrigerator admiration to the next level by boldly sitting inside. Talk about being a big Ice Age fan, huh? Just cut to the chase, man. You gonna buy it? I was thinking about buying it. Don't you know me check it out by looking at it, not testing it out? Sometimes. What are we gonna do, rob us? This mother is not getting away with it. Not here. Get ready, everyone. An exciting scene unfolded when the store owners confronted a potential thief. What an electrifying clash we're about to witness. Come on, man. You trying to rob me up like a crackhead Snoop Doggy dog. I'll tell you right now, you take another step, it's gonna be your last step and walk. Were you gonna stay in there all night, come out in the night? What if this guy is part of a bigger team? I'm worried. I need to figure out a solution and talk to my dad. Fake diamonds. This thrilling episode of Hardcore Pawn features a woman claiming her niece gifted her some earrings from their store. Oh, let the drama begin. So there's two problems here. The first problem, you don't have the receipt. Second of all, no cash. on the receipt it says no cash refund. One more problem that's really key to this whole thing. Mm -hmm. These are fake. Everything got off to quite a normal start until the lady customer was asked about the receipt. Yeah, apparently she was looking for a pass on that. Talk about being delusional. Two options. You, you pick whichever option you want. You can leave. No, I'm Second, going option. Up where? Second option what? is you can get the receipt and then. Ain't no can mother you finish finish listening. Listening. It ain't can no you receipt. Finish listening. No. I think no. it's time to leave. I'm not going nowhere. It was like a verbal storm. As far as her reaction goes, well, let's just say it was quite the showstopper. Let's see how Ashley handled the situation. This is Joe. Joe. Uh, how you He's going to show you to the front door. Wait a mother minute, now get your hands off. I guess you'll leave. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be back. I'll be back. See you then. Little ass baby, you need to go get fair right quick. Con artist. Buckle up for this one. An overconfident individual walks in claiming to have big cash to buy something. His grand entrance sets the tone for this bizarre encounter. Let me see this one right here, this one right here. That's platinum. Yeah, I like that one. Oh, now this is real nice right here. I think I could look good when I go out with this one. That one's sharp. How much is this one right here? $5.99. Oh, no, oh, no, baby. Hold on, folks, because this is one roller coaster of a ride. 
Our protagonist believes he's holding a fortune enough to buy a $500 watch. It's a $2 bill. Okay, and it's worth $2,000. It's rare to find a $2 bill that got red in it. Now tell me it ain't worth $2,000. I'm about to go deaf right now. Oh, don't, don't piss off who got it. This fellow insists that a humble $2 bill is worth a whopping $2,000. Give me a break. This dude better be on drugs for this to make sense. So you wanna borrow my $2 bill? Uh, you know what? Yes. I'm gonna tell you something. Okay. You owe bologna sandwich. Y'all ain't got no money. You know okay. what I'm have a good day. Big Mouth, Big Mouth is hungry. <laughs> You're hilarious. Real funny, man. Y'all be killing me. I pawn you. Gift card. In a sadistic twist, a customer enters waving a $100 bill, claiming it's for bail. Oh boy, let's see what she has on her buying list. Let me see this right here. This will be good. Okay. This one. This is really pretty. Okay. Mm. That's really pretty. It's really Looks pretty. Looks good on you. That one's 100. 100? I'll take it. Okay? So this woman falls in love with an item, but you would not believe how she decides to pay off. <laughs> what a classic move of pawn shop antics. It's a $100 gift card. These are not our gift cards. What would you call it? These that are preferred customer. Right. So these are VIP cards. A gold card allows you discounts on the sales floor. You can't swipe this card and apply $100 on it. Seems like this woman had her fast one playbook already at the pawn shop. But hey, who can predict the wild escalations life throws our way, right? Somebody want to buy off a bar gift card? There's not a hundred. I need my money. Somebody want a hundred dollars? Invisible phone. In a daring attempt to find the perfect gift for her son, a woman decides to venture into the pawn shop. But little did she know what awaited her there. I was kind of looking at some of these watches. Okay. Where the hell is my f phone? Something wrong? Yeah, my phone. I just let my. F did you take my phone? I take your phone. There was never a phone on the showcase. Well, folks, it appears our big mama's stealth skills might need a tune-up. However, did you see her put a phone there? <laughs> Not me. I ain't crazy, crazy girl. Girl. damn it. I just yo, laid my phone yo. there. Don't touch me, yo. You better yo, get you off because I ain't you hey, hold hold on, 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 when you start attacking another customer in the store, you have got to get out. Yo, my yo, yo, you better get this lady because I ain't got yo, nothing, please, yo. Listen. Nobody don't got time yo. for this, yo. Get this old ass lady you off get my me. Looking for a boyfriend. A girl visits the pawn shop on the hunt for her beloved boyfriend. Can you guess where she might find him? Oh, you got it. It's none other than the store itself. Talk about a stroke of genius. I'm sorry, but who are you? you? Get him for me. Mm -hmm. And so what's this regarding? Um, he's my boyfriend and he's not paying child support. You're That's his girlfriend? I yes, I need him. So don't you have a cell phone number? Could he just get Chad, please? I do have a Chad that works here, but I don't have time for this today. Our girl meets Seth, who's in a funny mood today. Get her ready for a humorous encounter that'll surely make you laugh. It's time for some entertainment. Come on, grab Chad for me. His lovely girlfriend's here. Like, I got all day to just be wasting Keep, my time. This young lady would like to see you. That's not him. Y'all playing games with me now? That's Chad. No, that's not. Then I don't know. I know who I sleep with. What? This lady is out of her mind. Well, apparently, lady, they've got the wrong Chad. So you better take your business elsewhere. Or you've just started looking like a scammer. It's going nowhere fast. Oh, you're talking about Chad. The tall guy with the waves. Yeah, Chad. He just went outside. He's right out there. Y'all wanna sit here and play with me? If this was Chad's girlfriend, I have one piece of advice, Chad. Run away. Where the he at? Watch that. Tressa, the ex-employee, decides to stroll back into the pawn shop with a Rolex watch in tow. Guess what? It's the one her boyfriend paid for. The guy that bought it for you disputed the credit card. No, he didn't. I, here, I can put him on the phone for you. Hold on, Tressa. He did dispute it. He's never been paid for the watch. I can give you a loan today for a thousand, but... Things heat up quickly between the ladies as Tressa and the shop owner engage in a fiery exchange. 
How about we skip everything to the dispute paperwork? They mailed him a piece of paper to close the dispute. Do you have the form on you? No, but I can call him. Okay, so when you get the form, just, I can give you a loan for the thousand on the watch. So I can give you the loan that, for the that's, thousand. That's stealing. Disputed. It's not fully paid for right now. Until we receive the paperwork. You're wrong right now. Now, let's all hope she can gather her dignity and retrieve that slip to claim her hard-earned cash from the pawn shop. It was time for a little redemption. Let's do the thousand dollar loan, and then I'll be back with the paperwork. Honest to God, you are so wrong. I'm not a nice person. That's nice to say to your, how old are you? Look how you're treating me I'm in front of my kids. Home ridiculous because it's been appraised over the years uh, back in the 90s it was yes, it is. I don't care what you say I don't care what you tell me just another day at the pawn shop y'all the vibes fluctuate from a static to major bummer it's like a reality show unfolding right in front of us just the familiar faces which come and go spilling their stories the pawn shop where dreams collide with real life it's a roller coaster of emotions my peeps What's up, folks? Welcome back to another episode of Pawn Stars. Today, we've got a hilarious tale for you, straight from the famous pawn shop in town. So grab your popcorn and let's dive right in. It all started when this old man walked into the Pawn Stars shop, carrying a semi-Mosley guitar, along with all the proper documentation. Little did he know what he was about to get himself into. And who do we have on the other side of the counter? None other than Rick Harrison himself, the proud owner of this legendary establishment. Let's see how this unfolds. Cool. I know a little bit about him. I know that he started off repairing guitars and then actually started making guitars. Rick wasted no time, man. He was all like, yo, spill the beans about that famous guitar. And the old man, who seemed to know everything about this valuable guitar, started sharing all the juicy deets. He had some seriously high expectations for the guitar, thinking it would rake in a crazy amount of cash. But hold up, let's not get ahead of ourselves just yet. Rick ain't one to take risks when it comes to buying stuff, you know. So he decides to bring in an expert to make sure he ain't getting played. Smart move, Rick. It's always a good idea to get a second opinion, especially when there's big money involved. And bam, here comes the expert himself, a dude who knows guitars like nobody's business. He's about to drop some serious knowledge on this situation. The expert took a look at the hype about Semi Mosley guitar, which the old man thinks it's worth a fortune. Now, this is where things start to get interesting. Keep an eye out for those moments when the old man's high hopes are about to go down the drain. After a thorough examination, the expert was ready to deliver his verdict. It would probably be $25,000. Well, the guitar was in great shape, no doubt about it. But no way the market value hovers around $25,000. And just like that, the old man's hope went to waste. But the old man thought the expert was kidding, and he didn't take his opinion seriously. After the expert opinion, it was time for the final moment. And here comes the classic pawn shop thanks. We're not going to make a deal, so all I can tell you is good luck. Thanks. And oh, did I see it right. This thing ended even without a start. Well, I'm glad it saved some misery for Rick. Knowing that the guitar was worth way more than just $25,000, he left. And just like that, the deal hit a brick wall. The old man's unrealistic expectations collided head on with the reality of the market. But next, we have a total moron who shows up at the Pawn Stars shop. The old man who thought he hit the jackpot, but in the end, reality bit him in the you know where. So, this another wild encounter is with our favorite goofball, Chum Lee. The episode starts with Chum Lee going to meet Buck, the owner of an antique pirate ship. Buck's got this badass pirate boat, and it can hit speeds of up to 60 miles per hour on land. Now, that's some crazy shit, my dudes. Chum Lee's eyes lit up like fireworks when he saw this epic pirate ship. You had a boat. It is a boat. Does it float? No. It he can tell he's itching to make a deal, but he knows he can't go rogue without Rick's permission. Well, the first thing he did was to send Rick a picture of this crazy giant. While waiting for Rick's reply, Chum Lee decides to go have a little fun on the ship. Woo! I'm on a boat! Sup, ladies? And it's quite evident that he's having a great time strutting around like Captain Chum, living his best pirate life. Now buckle up, because things just got real, real quick. The fun times, yeah, they're over. Now we're diving into the spicy stuff, my peeps. We've reached the classic pawn shop negotiation phase, and let me tell you, it's about to get intense. Chum knew he had to haggle, but Buck, man, that guy is stubborn as a mule. Buck straight up dropped the bomb, saying he won't sell his ship for anything less than a mind-boggling $190,000. And let me tell you, 
Chum Lee's face went from pure excitement to straight up panic in a blink of an eye. Now, some might argue that it's a fair price, right? Like, this baby is worth every single penny, Chum. 190k and she's all yours. But can Chum swing that kind of dough? Nah, man. Chum Lee's in way over his head, and he knows he can't afford that kind of cash. It's a total bummer, dude. This deal is going down the drain faster than a sinking ship. But hold up, Buck ain't giving up that easily. He wants to speak with Rick, and honestly, that's pretty fair considering the time he invested in showing Chum around the ship. And yep, you saw it right. Rick sent a text, but guess what? It ain't the reply we were hoping for, my friends. Rick shut down the whole idea before it even set sail. Chum Lee's dream of becoming a pirate captain just came crashing down like a freaking cannonball. It's a gut-wrenching scene, my friends. The disappointment is real. Whatever. Oh, sorry, man. Buck is fuming like a volcano about to erupt. It's clear he's not happy with the outcome. Ships ahoy, disappointment. Another prime example of Chumley's misadventures. The pirate ship's dream sank faster than a cannonball in the water. Brace yourselves for a dramatic tale involving a limited edition bronze statue. Let's dive right in. So it all starts with a man named Raphael, walking into the Pawn Star shop with this fancy limited edition 1888 bronze statue by Louis Bacall, a renowned French sculptor. After looking at the statue and knowing the potential value of this piece, Rick started salivating like a hungry wolf. Moving further, Rick's expert eyes started analyzing every little detail, hoping to strike gold and make some serious cash. And as Rick is examining the statue, you can see the excitement building up. If it turns out to be the real deal, it could be worth thousands of dollars. The suspense is killing. Come on, man, show me those original markings. Now, Rick's like a detective on the case, searching for any signs of authenticity. And in a dramatic twist, Rick got the truth. You need to see this. What's right. What doesn't look right is there's some pity right here. And that crack right there is from when they cast it. It didn't happen later. The statue has been recast. Oh, the disappointment is real, my friends. Well, ain't that a kick in the teeth? This statue is nothing but a fancy replica. 1888. The original was made in 1888. I don't believe you. Okay, I mean... I Raphael's hopes went up in smoke, and the idiotic mistake is laid bare. I what you say. I don't care what you tell me, but I know you're full of you know. Looking at Raphael, it's sure he's clear that he's not taking the news well. He's about to unleash his frustration on Rick, and things are about to get heated. And what did we see? Looking at the heated argument, Rick's bodyguard was just about to get in the scene, but Rick stopped them. Just when tensions were about to boil over, Richard stepped in to play the peacemaker. He's not one to let things escalate, especially when it comes to business. And I 100% agree with what Richard just said. You might be wrong, we don't know. We're in the business to make money, but when we don't feel comfortable with something, we're gonna back off. He's a smart guy indeed. It's true that they are here to make some dough, but with that, they also gotta be smart about it. If something doesn't feel right, gotta back off. No hard feelings, Raphael. Do you agree that a business is about making money and sometimes we gotta be cautious? Can't blame us for not wanting to get burned. Look, Richard's wisdom prevails, reminding everyone that it's all about the money, but also about maintaining integrity. All right, all right, let's take a chill pill, guys. And there you have it, another crazy encounter on Pawn Stars. Raphael thought he hit the jackpot, but in the end, it was a painful lesson in authenticity. The Pawn Stars team reflects on another day filled with unexpected encounters and quirky characters. Rick, ever the shrewd businessman, knows that every deal won't be a success, but he remains optimistic for the next opportunity that walks through his shop's doors. The customers may have acted like real idiots, overestimating the value of their valuables, but it's all part of the pawn shop's charm. We can't wait to share this hilarious encounter with you guys. Trust me, it's gonna be a riot. It's a reminder that in the crazy world of pawn shops, you never know what surprises are waiting around the corner. It's like a never-ending treasure hunt, and we're loving every minute of it. Take it off. Take it Seth, easy, Seth, doing? please. Take it easy. What are you doing? Seth! Seth! <laughs> Ashley has pushed Seth too far. Something's gotta change. Hang on, cowboy. Right. <laughs> Oops, fire. Ladies and gentlemen, hold on to your seats. In a thrilling episode of Hardcore Pawn, a car in the parking lot finds itself in a rather heated situation. No, we're not exaggerating. You'll see. 
we were really concerned. Your car's totally on fire right now. Yeah. Should we try to get a hose over there? It's right underneath those power lines, which is our power lines. It's burning so bad that it's going to burn the electrical wires. We call 911. Rich is directing traffic. It was right next to our power lines. What are we supposed to do? Isn't that a chaotic scene that feels right out of an action movie? However, in the middle of all the frenzy, check out this guy. You won't want to miss this. As his car is in flames, this guy is pulling out his fire helmet, his fire jacket, fire equipment. I'm thinking, what the f is going on? All right, dude, this thing's f starting to go. Now we got to come up with another plan. Out of there. That's going to cut up those power lines. Less, it's time to act. That fire could get worse. How about grabbing your phone and dialing 911? You know to keep things safe and sound. It makes you wonder what these guys go through. He's inside of the hood like it's nothing at all. Because of the wonderful effort, the Detroit Fire Department, they saved the day. There's a recall on oh, that car, and I haven't taken it in yet. You were stupid. Uh, that's... You were stupid. <laughs> that was a bad day for not taking your car for a recall. The toilet. All right, who's in the mood to take a big dump? If yes, these two ladies have the 1955 rare toilet. What? Here's the unusual bathroom adventure. How much do you want for this toilet? 400. They don't make them anymore. And I saw a pink one online and they wanted $600. Seth lays down the law. In case you missed the memo, we don't do toilets here. So these ladies might want to flush their deal elsewhere. How about 50 bucks? $10? Oh my goodness. Really? Well, I don't want to put it back in the car. I know this is a crappy old toilet. Paying $10 to get under my brother's skin is all worth it. Ashley sure knows how to annoy her brother, but this time, she might have taken it up a notch. Anyway, just have a look at how he decides to take care of the toilet deal. Would you like to double your money? Who wouldn't? Here's 20. Meet me outside. See you out there. Bobby J, bring it this way. Take it Seth, easy, Seth, please. Seth! Mechanical Bull. Ah, the nostalgia of the Wild West, where bull riding and tough cowboys reign supreme. But it seems like someone didn't get the memo that times have changed. It's time to get with the program, people. Girl, we're trying to sell our Mechanical Bull. Why do you have it? We had a, a Western-themed restaurant bar before, and uh, that was the theme. We put it, the bull in the, into the bar, okay. and uh, now we've recently remodeled and changed themes, so now we've got to sell the bull. Well, slap on those cowboy hats. We've got ourselves a scene here. But seriously, who's taking bets on whether they can wrangle a decent price for that rodeo-style bull riding? How much do they cost? They cost around fifteen to 20000 How much do you want? 15000 If I was to buy this brand new or buy this used from you, it's the same price. Rental companies rent these out for seven fifty a day. There's a lot of revenue potential. So 2000 would tempt you? Two no. Oh dear, it's quite a sight to witness these macho men taking their bull back home, but hang on, because Ashley just might have a surprise up her sleeve. 3,000 right now. 45. 31. 39, you pack it up. That's my bottom dollar. 34. I can't do it. Sorry, good luck. Casket car. You won't believe this one. A man seeks to part ways with his unconventional ride, a casket car, hoping to strike a deal with the pawn shop. I kid you not, to watch for yourself. So explain to you why you bought this? Well, we're really into a Halloween, and it's basically the ultimate prop. I mean, our house is decorated, I mean, really? completely in, inside and out, all year round. And by far, I believe this is one of the best vehicle we've ever owned. It's an everyday car for us. Well, Halloween enthusiasts, just let me know if it's the ultimate prop or not. But just wait, aren't we all curious if there was something inside the trunk? 30 years old, it's still pretty good. Are you selling it with the coffin? Uh, yeah, we could do that. I mean, obviously. Is that a fake coffin? No, this or? is a real real coffin out of a funeral parlor. Did it come with the casket? No, I, I gave it to my wife on Valentine's Day. Really? Oh. Things took an unexpected spooky turn. What's going on here? Maybe it's time we shift our attention from the creepy casket dummies and focus on the deal at hand. How about 1500 What? Are you joking? He sees the value in a classic car. What's it throw? gonna do? How about 25 with the How coffin? About, wait. You're really seriously? Thinking about it, yes. 1600. How about 18? 1650. No. Monster Deals. It's that time of year again, sales season. Just like any other shop, our pawn brokers were pulling out all the stops to lure in customers. Get ready. I had the best idea. This is huge. Try to tap this one, Seth. Bet you can't. What? 
What? Oh my God. Oh my goodness, brace yourselves. Ashley unleashed a marketing masterstroke that left everyone stunned. Get ready for the jaw-dropping details of her grand plan. This is your great idea. There you go, monster deal. What is this? Seth thinks he's the only one that knows how to bring business in the store. This is my marketing technique. Come on, look at this thing. Do it's you see what's cute. wrong with it? You don't know what the hell you're talking about. Our pond queen was positively thrilled with the idea, but Seth, well, let's just say he didn't quite share the same level of enthusiasm. Here's what he thought. Monster deals. What the f does monster deals even mean? Big deals. Their eyes are going to be drawn to that. It's way too small. You can't even see it. Anytime a giant gorilla is on anybody's roof, it's going to bring attention. They like the gorilla. Yeah! Horse. Gather around for an interesting story, folks. We've got a woman who had taken her horses to the nearby pawn shop in the hopes of getting some fast money. What an unusual move. Oh, whoa. Yeah, watch out. Watch out. We're coming. Wait, wait, wait. Wow, I haven't seen it all. It's a donkey, too. You take it? <laughs> Let's go. Okay, I'll meet you right out there. Let's head outdoors, folks. Those horses might get rowdy in the shop. And guess what? It's not just one horse. Take a look at this scene. I don't know how she did that. She was pretty good. So we got a donkey, we got pony. Pony <laughs> and, and a, horse. a horse. Do you have a saddle? I'm down, girl, saddle. Do you have a towel? <laughs> okay, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. This is the one we need to buy. Not that far before. Our pawn queen seems to fancy those pony sparkles. Time for some horse trading, folks. Let's see if a fair deal makes it way into the picture. I'll split the second one with you. 125? Yeah. Okay. Oh my god, I just bought a horse. The kids will have fun. I think the family will have fun. I think I should start to learn how to ride it. That was really crazy, you know. I never had horses in the store before, especially on a stripper pole. Now I'm glad we ended up buying it. Laptop room. Big Boss Les randomly stumbled upon a screwdriver by the laptop storage room. Turns out, someone's been making off with pricey merchandise. Oh boy, I don't like the sound of that. I go in the back and I see this screwdriver next to the laptop room. Explain that I caught Justin just the other day breaking into the laptop room trying to get a laptop. You didn't fire his ass that minute? I told him next time I catch him doing it, I was gonna fire him. Let's call his ass out. Uh-oh, looks like someone's in trouble. Les decides to call a meeting with staff to unmask the mystery thief. And for a reminder of how tough things can be for everyone. Randy, as running this back, tell me what the f is going on with this door. When we needed to get in that room, I didn't have the keys. I needed to get in there to get that laptop, so I just went in there and got over. But you have permission to go in there no matter how you get in there, you have permission. Am I correct? Do you? Well, ladies and gentlemen, Justin's in the hot seat now. The trigger's been pulled his way, and it's decision time. Will he take the bullet or do some fancy dodging? Here it is. Did you steal anything? No, I would never steal anything. It's just to do my job. When I'll, I'll ask Rodney for the key and Rodney doesn't show up to get this laptop, that manager that I asked didn't come get the laptop, so I'll just... What the f excuse is? You broke my trust. And because of that, Justin, you're fired. Tiffany watch. A man's got an antique Tiffany watch and a burning desire to sell it to the pawn queen, Ashley. But hold on to your goats. There's a twist coming. I've already done a little bit of research on this thing. This watch is 160 years old plus, at least. And you've had offers of 3,200 and you want more. I do. It's gorgeous. There's old mine cut diamonds on it. This could be worth thousands of dollars. I need my dad's help. Our jewelry selling farmer decides to bring a goat as his lucky charm while dealing with the boss lady. But the real question remains, is the Tiffany watch the real deal? This watch could be worth a fortune. Does it say Tiffany in it? No, we're inside. That's the problem. So, a couple things. Why would Tiffany not want to buy it? They don't actually do that at Tiffany's in New York, so they won't authenticate it. They don't authenticate items that aren't genuine, sir. Like this cheap knockoff. You better go put that back in your pocket and get going now. The movement in the watch is not Tiffany. Tiffany did make their own movements. Another thing that makes us believe that it's not Tiffany the is the way the diamonds, diamonds are set. 160 years ago? Tiffany would have normally set them better More professionally. even back then. I can pop it back on, it's no big deal. It should pop on pretty easy. No cables. Here's a classic one, folks. An elderly lady wants to pawn her TV, but there's a twist. 
no cable or remote. <laughs> Let's see how Les handles this clown. I have two sons and I'm a few dollars of giving them an apartment. So this TV is going to help me to live again. What will you do when you go home? Won't you miss that? I might want to get naked up in there. What in the world is she doing? She thought maybe acting like a fool might cash in some bucks. But I don't think that's ever gonna happen. A little bit of cash would suffice. Suffice, suffice. LP. Or suffice. 150. Do you have a plug? You have plenty of them here. You got the remote? They got remote? plenty of those too. She had no cord, she had no remote. She really didn't know what the hell she had. Our old mama here might look for some other ways to fund that boys over. Because clearly, that isn't much to talk about after that. You see the situation I'm in. I'm gonna show you how important this is to me. Woo, woo, woo. Well, what about that now? <laughs> cash, cash, cash. How about 25 bucks? 150, like I said. 25. You can't you can do nothing for me. Yeah, I can. 25 bucks. No, we can't go for that one. PS3. This dude looks like a goon from GTA. He came to the pawn shop to reclaim his PS3. I know, folks. The description of the man makes the whole scene more interesting. I'm just trying to get my I got a brand new PlayStation 3 up in this bitch. You know what it is. Let me just get my in the line like everybody else. I'm just else. saying, I've been standing. Stop yelling. What the are you yelling about? I'm just about? saying, I want you to be able to hear me through this window. That's kind, even. Give your slip, get your item, and get out, bro. But wait, there is a twist we all been waiting for from our protagonist. This ain't mine, this the wrong one right here. This, this is, I don't know who it is, it ain't mine. Got me this this. Look, 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 mine's brand new out the box. What is this? Yours. The minute he brought it in, we bagged it and labeled it. Oh man, why do they always have to threaten the old man when things can be sorted through negotiation? But anyway, Here's the inevitable. Hey, get your hands up off me, big fella. Straight the f up, boy. Get your hands off of me right now. I swear to God, if y'all don't give me my PlayStation, I call 30 goons up here right call now. Him. I call 30, 40 goons call up here him. right now. Call him. Meet my lawyer. A woman storms into the pawn shop, swearing their diamond earring and turning her ear green. And guess who's with her? A lawyer, no less. I look at his earring that he says is turning zero green, and it's a fake diamond with a fake metal. This is not the correct earring for the receipt. I got my lawyer with me. This is wrong. Oh dear, Miss Drama, it's not that simple. Your slip doesn't quite match the description, so getting that refund might be trickier than you thought. Would you like to meet my attorney? I want my money. My attorney will escort you out. You better not put his hand on me. Then you better turn around with your two legs and walk out yourself. I'm not walking nowhere. Wanna bet? Well, lady, it was time for you and your mannequin of a lawyer to walk out the store while keeping your respect where it belongs. Get out. You don't just tell me what to do. Get out. Yeah, you know, took my money. You showed me a bold earring. Got my ear turning colors. I don't care if he had 10 lawyers in here because we didn't make his ear green. It's just a scam. <laughs> Time to go. No. My friend's laptop. Are you low on cash? How about you swipe your laptop, hoping to make a quick profit at the nearest pawn shop? If you want to give it a try, just watch what you're heading into. What the hell? You mean to tell me you don't stole my damn laptop and I don't know these damn kids for this damn laptop all this damn That's how you don't play me? We're supposed to be friends. You're supposed to be friends. Oh, that tension, right folks? However, our big boss Les was unable to fully comprehend the conflict. And he couldn't care less. These people were just up to making a fool of themselves. I think that these women were fighting over laptops. <laughs> We, being a sucker for drama, sorted it all out. Apparently, somebody's valued belongings were stolen by their BFF. What chance do they have of surviving this unthinkable betrayal? All right, that's enough, that's enough. All this time, my laptop was missing, but I got my laptop. Okay. That's all that matters. All right. Earring error. In the dazzling world of pawn shops, we find a woman aiming to part ways with her prized earrings. 
but only if things were that simple, then there wouldn't be a whole show made out of it. I'm here to pawn these earrings. Okay. Trying to get $350 for them. Why do you need the money? It's none of your business why I need the money. Pawn my mother jewelry. We all know that our big boss here has quite a keen eye for the merchandise he deals with. And warning, you better watch out if you try to sell him a knockoff. These are real. They are real earrings. They're just not real diamonds. They are. No, they're yes, not. Yes, the they are real. How the you gonna tell me just by looking at my that they're not real? They're not real. As things were getting hot, the woman kept getting non-negotiable. That definitely makes a reality TV treat. Keep it coming, girls. Ladies that act like ladies are treated like ladies. No, it don't work like that. Time to go. Stubborn guy. Our Mr. Clumsy here managed to turn his girlfriend's car all wrecked up. Now he's off to pawn his genius level ideas to fix the car and his relationship. I need to pay my court fees. I got a DUI, crashed my car. Well, her car. I took her car with a couple friends. You just need to get as much as you can. It's not your damn business. I'm, I'm, I'm here for you. All full of himself, he went all gangsta mode on Seth trying to get money for two of his rings. Did it work? Nope. However, things were about to get more annoying. What's the highest you'd go? 900 bucks. That's ridiculous. Tell me what it is. No, don't tell me what to do. Stop, Stop talking. Stand behind me. Wait, what's, what's, what's the problem? To understand behind me. This is man, men talking right now. Our boy's respect for his girlfriend shines through as the negotiations heat up. Hold on to your seat, because this encounter was a true lesson in having proper manners. Maybe we should just take the money. It. Stop talking. Just Dude, stop talking. seriously, why are you Just such an ass? No, you need to, no, I don't no. need to. You're so my you, store. It is my business. It's not your property. It's not your pro property. Do She's I tell your own property person. what to do? Hopefully one day she'll wisen up, move on, and realize that this guy's a complete tool. Mother-daughter feud. Well, ladies and gentlemen, hold on to your liquor bottles for a heartwarming episode of Mother-Daughter Treasure Hunters. They had gathered some priceless junk to fund their world tour. So what you got? I got some really expensive stuff. Show me. Some old liquor bottles. Some old albums. Stamp book. Don't you think he worth something? No. You got a whole lot of nothing going on over there. But wait. Les examines their items and deadpans. Sorry, ladies. It's all junk. No worth. The things took a swift left from there, guys. Told you it wasn't worth nothing. You need to watch your trap because this is worth everything to me. It don't matter. They don't want it. This is not junk, okay? So don't you comment on. I told you. So you better not don't. to come here. You better we don't waste go there. Gas. You better don't. You better don't. It's like watching a comedy where emotions run high over little treasures. They both argue fiercely about sentimental items. Talk about teaching your kids some manners. I will kill you your ass. I'm your mama. You better die. How the heck is you better dumb? No, you get the <laughs> off my <laughs> I thought it was kind of funny watching the mother and daughter argue with each other. Okay, okay. 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 You know, bitch. All right, that's enough. You that's don't enough. know who the <laughs> Body slam. Our guy claims his grandma's ring is a lost treasure. Well, that part's for Ashley to decide whether it's real or something that came out of a cereal box. How much are you looking for? Is this enough to pay rent? How much is your rent? 300. Okay. Um, do you have anything else? Because this unfortunately is not real. What you mean it's not real? It's not real gold. Well, basically, y'all sit up here and waste my time talking to you. You don't waste your time. Oh dear, Mr. Sad Story. You've really painted yourself into a corner now. It was almost as if he was starring in his own drama series. Oh, I just need my ring. I need to speak with somebody else because you irritate me flat out. I'm trying to help you solve like, what your you issue. Mean? What I'm you trying mean? to help you solve like your this, issue. Lower your voice. This guy's acting really erratic and it's making me really nervous. Hold on tight because here come the Powerpuff Boys to rescue our protagonist from his own soap opera. What a gimmick. A day he's gonna remember for a while. Don't right, put your hand you in your No, you got my She ain't by herself, my man. Bitch, I'll be back, bitch. You're talking that now, get the hell out of here. He was lucky I have other things on my mind, or I would have beat him to a pulp. PlayStation. In a stunning twist, our lovable, larger-than-life customer walks into the pawn shop dreaming of snagging a PS3. Let's hope the controller can keep up with this enthusiasm. How much are your PlayStation 3s? How much you want to spend? You got 70 bucks. Can't let him go for 70, my man, unfortunately. I've seen him for 70 to 80 dollars in other pawn shops. Does it come with a warranty? It comes with an as-is warranty. Unless no. you'd like to purchase an additional I, warranty, which I'd I'll like just, to help you with. This is bull****. 
our six-pack gamer needs some physical exercise rather than video games. Mirror, mirror on the wall? Who needs a jog more than them all? I need a PlayStation 3 for $70. I saw him for 100 bucks. That is ridiculous. Oh, all my God, is 70 I want somebody else to talk to around here. Well, there's only going to be one other person you're about to talk to, and if you keep your voice raised like that, we'll be more than happy to speak with you. And here's where you might consider scheduling that eye wash. Oh, boy. Up next could rival a comedy sketch, complete with unexpected twists and turns. Get out of here. Sounds like a ride, big boy. Big boy. Ride, big boy. Here we go, big boy. Here we go. Have a good day. What is all that about? What you want to do? Come down, this my level. Be so ass down here. What? Do you want Do right. Ashley fires. So, guess what? There was a worker at the pawn shop who some folks thought might be stealing stuff. Ashley got wind of it and had a little investigation on her hands. You said you wanted to know if Tressa asked me to put anything else on the internet? Yeah. Well, she did. She did? Another watch. Are you kidding? Nope. I'll take care of it. Don't even put it on the internet. Okay. I have to check with Brian first to see if Tressa got permission to pull the watch from the display case. Right when Ashley was busy being a detective, the sneaky thief decided to drop in. What wonderful timing! Well, since you're here, time to do some explanation. I didn't ask him to put it online yet. I didn't ask so him. So he wouldn't just offer it. Right. You said to come to one of you guys. Well, before I would have bought it, I would have came to you but guys. But you already asked him to put it on the internet. No. I said, was it a possibility? I pulled it out. I okay, you went around the bush and kind of asked him. No, I'm still not 100% sure if I wanted to buy it. All righty then. You're going home because you were not hired to make CEO level decisions. But wait. There has to be more about this situation. You're fired. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's I said I wasn't even sure if I was going to. It's fine. I literally told everyone that you weren't as big of a bitch. I was wrong. Excuse me? Get the I'm, out of here. I'm, Get out of here. Let's fight. Ah, uh, another aspiring pawn shop star enters the scene, ready to sell his treasure. Grab your popcorn, folks. This show's just getting started. Yeah, man, I'm trying to see how much I can get for this. I'm trying to get like, I'm trying to get at least a hundred for it. hundred dollars? Yeah. I won't even be able to sell it for near that. So how much can you give me, man? 20 bucks? 20 dollars? What the hell you mean? I'm more or less healthy than anything. Man, I'm gonna need more than 20 dollars for this, man. Of course. They're giving you exactly what it's worth, aren't they? So just take the money and run. But anyway, here is how our man decides to handle the situation. I need my money. I understand. I'm gonna need at least $100 for this. You pay 200 for that, I ever heard? Yeah, I mean, really, I'm you pay 200. I'll, pay I'll sell you like four of them. What would I want to buy? I'm trying to get money for it. I've been waiting in this line for hours. I need more than $20. Why is it more staff out here? Well, folks, things took a nosedive when our beloved Les decided to make an appearance. It was like wrestling mania at the pawn shop. Damn! What the f you gonna do, old man? Who the f you calling him? Really, mother? I got this. Who owed him twenty dollars? Get out! Time to go. F you. I've been waiting for an hour. Really? F me? F you? Yes. I can't believe one of them guys offered me a thousand dollars for that f them fifty pieces of Pez. That's an to the Pez community. I can't believe it. That's absolutely ridiculous because it's been appraised over the years. Uh, back in the 90s, it was appraised at a minimum of $100,000, and that was in the 90s. Pez collection. Well, hold the presses, folks. Our genius candy man is ready to part with his Pez dispenser gems. I can already hear the collector stampeding. What a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. These are very, very collectible, and it's a great hobby. Seems like this is something that kids would be into collecting, man. Come on, man. Busts my balls all day long. I know it might look childish to you, but there's definitely money into it. Oh, everyone's just dying for candy. I mean, who needs a balanced diet when you can have a mountain of Pez dispensers? Anyway, here's a quick run-through of his collection. I have the Mickey Mouse in the original box. It's a die cut. This piece here goes for about $350, $400. One of my coolest pieces I like is the original Batman. Very tough to find. You know, this goes for about $250, $300. However, forget the joy of indulging in sugary treats. The true sweet victory is mastering the candy trade. Here was the candy man making the quote. Give me 2,000, man. 1,000 bucks is what I can do. It's fine. All right, buddy, get out of here, man. I can't believe one of them guys offered me $1,000 for that them 50 pieces of Pez. That's an to the Pez community. I can't believe it. Roman coin. Check out this coin geek with a Julius Caesar-era relic, bringing seriously ancient bling to the table. 
History's calling, blingers. One of the neat things is, is where it says dictator on the front of it. Um, that's a negative term nowadays. Back then, it wasn't. During times of war, they would assign a person the title dictator. Mm -hmm. And a dictator had to, would do what was necessary to preserve the republic. All right, Rick, pause the history lecture. Drop the knowledge bomb. What's the scoop on this ancient coin? Break it down, buddy. We're all ears. How much were you looking to get out of it? I want 4,400, please. There's, there's a million variables, especially with ancient coins. And quite frankly, I don't know enough. I don't know if that's a good price or not. Do you mind if I have someone look at it? Sure, please. All right, I'll be right back. Thank you. Oh, buckle up for the roller coaster. The expert's verdict drops and booms the dramatic seller reaction. Get your popcorn, folks. It's perfectly genuine. All right. The very best of these have brought in the neighborhood of $200,000 each. OK. This is worth in a neighborhood of $1,500. Retail? Retail. OK. Well, 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 our expert, the all-knowing oracle here. But hold your piggy banks, because our coin collector's not done raising concerns. Yeah, I, I'd give you a thousand bucks for the coin. Is this a real offer, or? That's, that's a legitimate offer, yeah. That's not a legitimate offer. You're just using your position here, trying to buy something for below its market value. I guess we're not going to make a deal, man. Okay. You're lost, my friend. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Have a nice one. Semi Mosley. Step right up, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a real rock star here strutting in with a Semi Mosley guitar, thinking he's gonna hit the jackpot. <laughs> it smells like music in the air. When he was at a guitar convention in Europe, he met a Spanish luthier, and they had such a remarkable tone that Semi thought gospel musicians should have something that sings when they do the Lord's works. He did this prototype. Okay. He hand wound the pickups. Hold your applause, folks. Our guitar virtuoso has graced us with the rarest prototype ever made by Mosley. But hey, before we plug it in with the amp, let's have an expert take a look. This is the prototype gospel guitar. All right. In the guitar market of today, a realistic selling price on this instrument would probably be $25,000. And just like that, the situation escalates quicker than you can strum a chord. Don't know if that's worthy of music memorabilia, but here's how Mr. Safari's shirt reacted. That's absolutely ridiculous because it's been appraised over the years. Uh, back in the 90s, it was appraised at a minimum of $100,000, and that was in the 90s. I'm just saying from knowing what I've just recently sold myself, I don't think anybody's going to step up that high for it. Lamborghini clock. Oh, guess who's in town? The almighty clockmaster. Get her ready, everyone, because today's masterpiece is none other than a stunning Lamborghini dashboard clock up for grabs. These were uh, made by Briquet for Lamborghini in the introduction of the Diablo in 1990 through 1993. It was a big deal when it came out. It was the first Lamborghini to go over 200 miles an hour. Oh, look who's stepping into the ring. Chum Lee's thoughts on the masterpiece that the clockmaster didn't exactly applaud. Time for a clash of opinions. Okay, I, I've had clocks like this before. They don't sell like the watches do. Uh, they depreciate just like the Lamborghini. <laughs> I don't think he's funny. Okay. Oh, Chumley, hold that thought. Your wisdom's not on the menu right now. Let Rick, the negotiation maestro, work his magic. How about 25? How about 22? 24. Um, I'll go 2300 bucks. Okay. All right. Deal. Write him up, Chum. Charles Briefcase. Sit down and buckle up for this one, peeps. Remember Charles Lindbergh, the solo aviator? Our man here claims to possess his briefcase, and he's looking for some big bucks. A couple had bought a home, and this was one of the items that they had found. When they opened it up, they seen where it had embossed the name Charles A. Lindbergh. Okay. Right here. C.A. Lindbergh, Little right. Falls, Minnesota. Oh, sure. Let's not make paper planes and just have our fancy briefcase professional take a look at it because that's the most important thing, right? One thing that I found as I was doing research on this was a letter that Charles August sent to his son where he talks about the fact that he is out of money and he has been selling his goods. Well, isn't it just lovely when experts think they know everything? Our Lindbergh enthusiast has a different perspective and believes that their opinion is just as valid. I mean, try and do some more research, try to get some more documentation. That's all I can tell you. 
All right, will that change your mind? Depends on what you get, okay? All right, thank you very much. Have a nice day, man. All right. This did not belong to his father, and I will prove that when I come back. It's gonna cost a whole lot more. Led Zeppelin. Prepare your stairway to rock heaven. Cue the legendary Led Zeppelin. Our rock stars got an album signed by the Fab Four members. Because who needs stairs when you've got music magic? Hey, this is really amazing. Led Zeppelin is one of the greatest rock and roll bands of all time. Every one of their albums was in the top 10, and six of their albums were number one. Now, four signatures on an album, if this is real, I probably won't want to put it in the store. I want to bring it home. Hold up, rock enthusiasts. Let's not navigate this riff alone. Time to ring in the pros for some signature symphony guidance. Here's how that went. Based on everything I've seen, absolutely no doubt this is the real deal. Sweet. And what do you think it's worth? These things just really don't exist. But with that said, I put this value right at about ten dollars to $12,000. Whoops, that just triggered a button. But hey, Rick's unfazed by our shenanigans and smoothly sails on with the negotiation journey. My best price uh, would be seventeen five. This is this is history. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'd go eighty five hundred, but no, I, I'm sorry. You know, okay. I appreciate the offer. Golden State Warriors ring. Guess what? Cupid's been busy, and our Romeo's on the hunt for a championship ring to dazzle the lucky fiance. Game on, love struck champ. So what I did was I brought pictures of another 75 Golden State Warriors ring. Okay. And as far as uh, the pictures are concerned, they, I mean, they, they match up. Yeah. It's perfect. Here's a Shakespearean plot twist. Romeo's seemingly out to give Rick a trigger. Come on, dude, you're facing a pawn shop titan. Let's see how this drama unfolds. It's not a testing. Uh, that's because you have a really cheap tester. Do you have one of your, your yeah, own? Yeah, I, uh, I have my own stuff over there. Yeah, I mean, if... Mr. Romeo came in, ready to take down the big G. But plot twist, the universe decides to serve him a slice of humble pie instead. Anyways, here's how things went on from that point. Any, any, uh... 11 grand, that's what I can do. That's your bottom line? Yeah, okay. that's price. Fair enough, I mean, I'm... Um, Disappointed, but it's you know your it's your property. You own it, and uh, you got to do what's in your best interest. All right. So. All right. No problem, man. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Halberts. Ah, behold the wannabe warrior, armed not with valor, but with a stash of classic weapons. Who needs battles when you can make quick money selling halberts? The modern quest. These axes are in amazing shape. If we can prove these are real, I know I can easily sell them to a military collector. So how much are you looking to get for these halberds? I need 7,500 each. 7,500 each, all right. Oh, perfect idea. Our financially savvy warrior needs an expert battle opinion on pricing halberds. Because, you know, conquering markets is totally like conquering kingdoms. The thing that really concerns me about this piece is that the steel is really flimsy. You know, you whack somebody wearing armor with this thing, it's liable to bend or break. I'll conclude that this is probably from the Victorian period and is what I call the decorator piece. Well, congrats on that masterclass. But hey, guess what? Corey's uncrushable optimism still has a glimmer of interest in our warrior's equipment. I mean, if I were to make you an offer, I'd make you an offer of around 1500 bucks. Are you talking a piece? <laughs> no, I'm talking total. No, I'm not interested at all. Well, if I were you, next time I'd buy one, I'd call Craig too. All right, appreciate it. All right, thank you. Bye. Photographs are said to be the doors to the past. We live ourselves through photographs again and again. But what if the photographs are made to lie or to make money? Isn't that point of view interesting? Let's meet a man who uses the photograph of great Abraham Lincoln and Mary Todd Lincoln to make $1 million. On a pleasant day, Rick gets a potential seller who's going to surprise him and us all with his possessed item and the strange demand. Good. So here we go. Gorgeous. It's supposed to be Abraham Lincoln and Mary Todd Lincoln. Yeah. Chumley grows suspicious of the Abraham Lincoln and Mary Todd Lincoln photograph. Surprising? Not really. Rick steps in, emphasizing the need for a master's eye before sealing the deal. Confusion ensues, prompting Rick to call in Maureen, an expert. Maureen declares the photo illegitimate, sparking tension between Rick and the seller. Spicy, right? Now the absurd unfolds. The seller demands a whopping $1 million for the photograph, leaving the crew and us, the audience, utterly speechless. The man has left us hanging. What's really going on here? In 10 years, I'm honest to God. 
I know, you think this is worth a million dollars? Isn't that correct, guys? Anyways, Rick didn't encourage the guy, which led to the repercussions between them. He took the big leap and faded away from the scene of action. Is greed an important factor in this, or are the sellers genuine in their prices? A lesson for you guys. One shouldn't be dumb enough to be this greedy. Fascinated by weapons, right guys? Guns top the list. Now picture this, you invest all your savings in a pistol, only to find out it's a fake. Ouch, that's gonna sting. Watch how this man loses himself on realizing that he bought a fake flintlock for $800. What do we got? We have a 1763 French flintlock pistol. Okay, you want to see it? Absolutely. Corey is approached by a man with a cool looking flintlock pistol. This dude wants one grand for this pistol. Who can blame him, guys? The pistol does tell some brave stories. This guy is so passionate about the pistol, such that he explains how the gun works. Isn't it always fascinating how people are so interested in these fields? So this man expects a grand from it, but things are gonna change soon. The specialist claims that the pistol only costs 75 to $100. Pretty unexpected, right folks? This crushed the man. He saw his life stuck for a while. He couldn't believe anything he heard then. The thing is, is, is a fake. I'm Poor guy, he asked again and again for confirmation, but nothing could change the reality. Let's dig more to confirm whether anyone else gets this reality check, shall we, folks? Next up, we can meet a kid who demands an unreasonable price for a Hudson Bay Gorget. Gorgets were used during the ancient days by the soldiers. Kind of interesting that people had used many things during the medieval age that still have an impact on the younger generation, right, guys? What's going on, son? I've got a Hudson Bay Gorget made probably around the 1700s. Hey, Rick. This young man shows the Hudson Bay Gorget to Rick. Rick immediately recognizes that it's from the 1700s. But is it for real? Let's find out. The small dude asked $100,000 for the neck piece, which shocked Rick. Just like how we're sitting now. Try to focus, guys. Let's see how the deal is going to go down. Rick politely disagrees with his demand and gives him a clear clarification on why with proper reasoning. Things heated up as the young man started cussing at Rick. All right, have a nice day. That guy. I think he's just thinks I'm some punk kid. Rick returns the Hudson Bay Gorget politely, and the guy is angry and rude. He finds his way out himself while cussing and being angry at Rick. See, folks, realities are hard to swallow, but that's the way it works. Isn't it true, people? Things are getting more and more interesting as we dig more about these incidents, right, guys? Let's travel more. A piece of metal molded into a shape and is attractive. Yes, it's a ring. They are aesthetic and beautiful, but what if it costs $13,000? Let's see what happens during this encounter. One day, a client arrives at Rick's shop claiming that he owns a 1995 Atlanta Braves World Series ring. As the name suggests, the ring was gorgeous and was indeed a pleasure to the eye. The ring was so bright that it almost made Corey go blind for a little while. Let's see how. The ring was so fascinating that it captured the immediate attention of Corey and Chum Lee, and they identified it quickly. Sports enthusiast, huh? They exchanged their knowledge about the game, then the ring. They instantly felt a connection because of their craze on sports. Let's see till when the connections last. I'm sure that the journey will be interesting. Let's go on. Corey and Chumley found something that suddenly changed that friendly atmosphere among them. Do you have it, the ring? It's a staff ring. Okay. I know there's a huge difference in price between a staff. Yes, you heard it right. The ring didn't belong to the players. Instead, it belonged to the staff. Therefore, it's not the original player's ring. This made the client uncomfortable. They called down an expert to confirm the price and authenticity. Things are about to get more tense. Sit tight, guys. Client claimed that he expects $13,000 for the ring, but the expert confirmed that the ring only cost $800. Shocked, right? Then the client became furious and he claims that he's never going to return to the store for selling anything. He cusses the expert, Corey, and even Chum Lee. It's a portrait coin of Julius Caesar from the month before he got assassinated. Rome wasn't built in a single day, a familiar quote. What comes to mind? Julius Caesar, the most powerful ruler in history. Now, imagine someone claiming to have a coin with Julius Caesar's print, made just a month before his death. Even Rick was fascinated, eager to delve into the captivating details of this historical coin. A key addition, right? The man expects $4,400 for the coin, and initially Rick agrees without negotiations. But hold on, Rick consults an expert for a second opinion. 
Always better to consult before concluding, right? The expert drops a bomb. The coin isn't worth $4,400, but only a grand. Devastating for the client. As they argue and bargain, hope for more cash on the coin dwindles. The client insults Rick, furious, and storms out of the store. What really happened? The mystery remains. I got an old Steven shotgun, three triggers. It's been in the family for about 60 years. I travel around the country with my line of work, and I've been toting the shotgun around for the last 15 years. What do you do for a I'm an insurance adjuster. Three trigger shotgun. Guns are fantastic pieces of machinery. As we all know, they come in a variety of shapes and purposes. The usage of guns dates back to the ancient eras. Can you believe that the guns were a part of livelihood during the olden days? It was included in men's day-to-day -day activities. One day, a man approaches Corey and Chum with a unique gun. Hold on, folks, let's see how the deal goes. Corey suddenly became captivated by the gun. Man explained the significance of the gun. It was a three-trigger shotgun. It was one of the rarest guns in history. This invoked the spark in Chum and Corey, who isn't fascinated by the rarest of the rare gun. Let's see how they deal with this. Man gives more details about the gun to guys, its construction, design, etc. He even explains the types of metals used for making the gun and so on. Corey listens to every single detail and almost feels like the gun is legit. Chum also agrees with Corey's analysis. Corey admits that he isn't a gun expert, so he calls in a friend of his who is a specialist in this area. He came in and started analyzing the gun. He also confirms that the gun is authentic and rare. Corey and Chum thought that the gun could be a great addition to the shop and they can also make a reasonable sale. Then their situation changed. What may have happened? Let's dig more. The specialist confirms that the gun is legit and authentic, but the shotgun's condition wasn't great. This triggered a sense of fear in both the parties. The atmosphere got worse as the discussion about the price began. Man said that he was expecting $100,000 from the gun. Is that price justifiable as the gun is a rare antique? Let's find out. When the price was stated by the guy, Corey and Chum were dumbstruck. After hearing the specialist's opinion, they lowered the price to $500. This was quite insulting to him. He didn't agree to the price. Corey didn't negotiate further as he knew that it didn't price much. The man became annoyed. He left the place in anger. Was the gun really worth more? That's the question left for you folks. I've been collecting bikes for about 20 years and I started collecting Schwinn's like most guys do. And I just said, you know what? I want to collect something that nobody has. Murray Bikes. Everyone has owned a bike at least once in their life. There are a lot of bike enthusiasts around the globe. One such man approaches Corey and Chum with two hotshot cycles. Hop on, let's see what will happen. So one fine morning, a seller comes down to the shop to sell two bicycles. They analyze the cycles and understand that the cycles are none other than the Murray cycles. Murray cycles are one of the legendary cycles that dated back to the 80s. They were the best seller cycles during that era and were very popular. They were excited to see the OG unique cycles. For further clarification, the seller gave him the facts about the cycle, not only about its origin, historical values, the making, and mainly about their features. They listened to the features and examined the cycles closely. They asked if it is okay to take the cycle for a spin and so on. Things seemed pretty good and okay while they were discussing the facts about the cycles. For further clarification, also for expert opinion, Corey brings an expert and asks him to analyze. Will things run smoothly or not? Let's find out. The expert also discusses some of the facts about the cycle with the other three. They four have an open heart conversation about Murray cycles. Now things are going to take a different turn. Let's see why. Corey asks the seller how much he's expecting for the cycles and he claims that he expects around $8,000 for both the cycles. This leaves Corey in shock. As they negotiate, Corey claims he can only buy it for $3,000. The seller seems to be in distress and not willing to sign the deal. He claims that the cycles can be traded for more than the above mentioned price. Both of them disagree and the seller leaves the place without signing the deal. It was indeed a cycle that fascinates all of us. Maybe Corey has different ideals and also focuses on what's good in the field of business and more. So whose reaction do you think was the worst? Make sure you leave your comments below. And if you enjoyed my video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. See you in the next one.